Wario. Wario. Oh. It starts with a flip. Frick. Heck. Okay. I think we gotta work it on the first try. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hail to the year. As always, we have like the one minute of awkwardness <laughs> waiting for people to show. Okay, all right. Hi. I'm gonna have a sippy sippy. Hello. I'm really not sure what I'm doing for music tonight because like if it, usually I have like a separate device that I can play music on um, and I do not well actually maybe I could maybe I could hello 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 Actually, I think I can. Hold on. I think I can. I think I'm just being goofy. I think I'm just being goofy. Um... Oh, shit. Okay. Okay, hell yeah. <laughs> I don't have to awkwardly sit in silence. This is, I feel like it's gonna be mostly body, body doubling today. Hopefully the audio is okay. I have the heat on because I'm by the ocean and it's cold. Right when I do anything, I start getting texts from people. Can my doctor not text me? <laughs> Can they please wait? I don't know what side to put this on. I don't know if this is like a thing that happens with y'all's y'all's doctors or what but they like they want me to do this test and I didn't really know what it was so I didn't want to give them like a definitive yes but it requires you to have like a machine so they so they sent me this little device um and then they're like, okay, well, if you don't complete it in this amount of time, then we'll fee you $200. It's like, I'll give it back. Do you want it back? <laughs> and it's like, it doesn't matter if you send it back. Like, if they spend the effort to send you the device and you don't do the test, you get a $200 fee. And I'm like, well, I don't, I still don't know if I want to do this. I don't know if I want to do it. Because I have to take a medication to do it, and I'm not confident that I will not be allergic to it. So I, like, don't really want to do it at this particular moment in time. Am I going to charge me $200 if I don't? Hello? Like, is this just a me thing? <laughs> Currently, I'm working on a really weird cardboard... Hold on. A really weird cardboard machine designed to give someone a lobotomy <laughs> okay all right how is how does that work the design is very human <laughs> it sounds it
sounds very human. I forgot how hard it is to pay attention to two things at once. <laughs> I forego her. I forego her. I remember, I, have y'all fallen down the like watching movies on TikTok? Because I will do this where I'll see like a movie clip that I like and then I will go through and watch like an entire scene like searching up whatever keywords to try to find the next part. <laughs> so, Cause all these, I, I don't want to go anywhere else. Everything costs too much money. I don't want to pay. So I'm going to watch these like fractions of a clip where I don't understand the context. But that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. It's so difficult to sit through a movie. It's so difficile. Oh, hey, I'm working on art and procreate too right now. Let's go. Hell yeah. This is the body double stream. <laughs> Where I don't want to do shit. So I'm going to bother you guys. I'm going to bother you. Where the hell? Where to heck? Okay, here we go. No, that's not it. <laughs> Get to it. Where's my reverence back chart? Where did I go? Where'd I go? It just vanish. Oh, wait, no, here we go. Here we go. Found it. I'm having one of those days where I can't decide if I want to draw something really mushy or really intense. So we're probably gonna... Are we being for real right now? <laughs> Are we being for real right now? I hope Streamlabs didn't log me. Log me out. Uh, what effect are you trying for right now? I'm not- I'm not doing an effect. I'm just kind of getting my references in order. Um, to line everything up. Cause I use SketchUp for like 3D models for my- for my things. Um, but sometimes when I import the line art, it's not complete. It's like this kind of half done thing so I gotta figure out like what shape this chair originally was <laughs> basically to fill in all the little gaps I was telling my friend about Sab and I told him about how literally six pages in someone's died <laughs> yeah <laughs> is a thriller I think Within probably 20 pages, like, two people die. <laughs> Within the first two, two chapters, there are multiple deaths. <laughs> this is why I never understand when people are like, nothing is happening. And I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? 
I get confused when people start reading and they're like, nothing's happening, I don't get it. I'm like, what? I mean, two people just died. <laughs> so, I don't... I don't know what you perceive as nothing. Um, thank you for reading, though, by the way. <laughs> thank you for reading. I always get it so excited. Uh, yes, the SketchUp app. I'm not using the SketchUp app right now, but um, it's imported from the SketchUp app. And then I go from there, because I build my models in SketchUp. So I don't have to draw the same thing a billion times over. And some people were, because I was talking, oh god, that's not the right shape. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. I gotta get the right shape. Um, but there are some, like, webtoon artists who just, like, literally copy and paste a 3D model directly, and people were asking why I don't do that. I just don't like how it looks. I just don't like how it looks, and there are, like, some lighting tools that you can use to get it to, like, look a certain way, but I just feel like with the color palettes that I'm using, it doesn't look right, and I don't like it, so that's why I don't do that. Well, let's see how long it takes for me to get bored of this and go to something else. <laughs> um, actually didn't know about SketchUp until now. Gave it a download and we'll look more into it later. Just so you know, it isn't free. It's free to download, but it is a subscription app, which I hate. But they lure you in, and they're like, ooh, free download. It's not free. <laughs> it's not free. The PC version is free. Um, like, if you have a computer. But I don't know why they do that with, like, apps, where, like, the app is a subscription. Because they do that with Clip Studio, too. Um, where you can just buy, buy it for one price, but you can't for the app. Is it worth it? It depends what you're doing. If you use it a lot, it's worth it. Like I use it for almost everything, but if it's just like a thing you want to mess around with and you're not going to use it for everything, then no. So it really, it really depends on what you're doing. might just use it on the computer again yeah that's what i would recommend if you have a computer um to definitely try the pc version because there's like a pc web version that is free that it, it does most of the same things uh that the app does the app is just um more convenient and also i pay for the uh licensing so that is part of what I pay for is because I eventually want to make these into books. And because of that, I need to pay a licensing fee for using the models that I'm using. So like in that particular case, you know what I mean? But if you're just goofing and gaffing with it, then you don't really need to do that. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. This chair is thrown me for an absolute loop. <laughs> Where are these connected? And, like, I, I know it's one of those, like, 
industry standard type things. I keep getting ads. Oh my god. <laughs> Where, like, a lot of people who make comics use it just because it's the easiest thing to use. If you're, like, making a ton of backgrounds. Um, and I, like, recognize some of the models that people use. But some people do just, like, plop it in there. <laughs> Which I'm not a huge fan of. Because I just, I just don't like the look. But I totally understand uh, because of how time-consuming this shit is. I'd personally buy every sad book. I like physically owning things. I love owning physical items, but space... Oh, I feel that. <laughs> Thank you. I, I hope... I mean... Doing physical items is very much a process, so fingers crossed, everything comes out good, um, because I have to go through so many phrases, phases of printing and all that stuff. Me too, moi. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, I really appreciate, I appreciate it. Because I know space and also money is tight for a lot of people. So I appreciate it. When people are willing to support or to support me in that way. But I, I also just, I love, I love physical little things. Like even to just make and have my own characters on my own trinkets is so fun. Like I, there's so many things that I want to make. Like, Vogue Race, because I use Vogue Race to print. And they actually have, like, a lot of really quirky, fun little things, but I don't know if anyone would buy them. <laughs> but, like, they have, like, bo like bobblehead acrylic stands. Um, they came out with these new ones that are, like, spinning acrylic stands, and they have, like, this little bit in the middle that spins in a circle. Um... And, like, all of those look super cute. And they have one that's, like, it's a little acrylic head that you put in, like, a physical car. Like, it's a little car, a little toy car. And then the character is, like, driving the car. <laughs> and it looks so cute. Um, but these are all things where I'm like, would anybody... <laughs> would anybody just want one of my little guys in a car? <laughs> Vogue says gotten a crazy amount of variety lady variety lately i'm obsessed i know there's there's so many cute little things that i'm like oh i could do this and that and this but i have to actually physically do it and then like buy things and then it's a whole process it is a whole process But I do really want to do standees at some point, because I think standees are so cute. But I really, I really want to do back Like, I am obsessed with, like, like, obviously we all hate capitalism, right? <laughs> right now, especially. It's not fun. Not, not, mm. but, like, I almost went into advertising. I love, like, well-designed things and, like, fun graphic design and like I feel like I, I hate a lot of graphic like modern graphic design um but like I love a quirky quirky little packaging you know what I mean like I'm obsessed 
with a cute little package. Graphic design is my passion. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, like, I feel like people would look at my graphic design, like, because I love clutter. Like, I love when you see, like, a bodega or, like, a pizza place, and it just has the most cluttered, like, pictures everywhere, text everywhere, trying to let you know, like, 10, 20 bits of information on, like, an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Like, that's, I love objectively, like, bad graphic design. <laughs> like, I love clutter. I just want, like, as much on there as possible. Um... I love details, and I feel like a lot of, like, the, you know, the whole min minimalism, modernism is very popular, and I despise it. Like, here, I can, I can fucking show y'all. I have that on here. Making you guys look at things. <laughs> Making you guys look at things. Okay, I don't, am I going to be able to find it? Say, my room is so cluttered but controlled. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Like, everything is very precarious. But you wouldn't know that <laughs> if you weren't the one that, like, put it together. It's like all... All little Lego pieces... This is one of them. This was like the full card design. Um, Cause there were different ones for different. This one, I like this one better. This is like the, the folding design and then there's gonna be like a little plastic piece underneath it. So it's like sealed. Like, I just think it's so cute and I wanna order the packaging, but I need to have a minimum of 50 to order. And where is it? Where is it? Where is it? These are the cover covers that I'm working on. Because I wanted them to look like an old like VHS or DVD. That was the goal. That was the goal. And then where's the back? Where's the back? I really need to do a better job at organizing my Procreate stuff, but I'm so nervous that I'm gonna like delete something by accident if I move it. <laughs> so everything is just like out and about. Oh, here it is. Here it is. You know how in, like, the backs of DVD, they have, like, these little cropped images, like, mixed in with everything, and it's just very cluttered, and I just really enjoy it. I love the VHS look. Me too. Me too. I love just like the retro in general. It's so fun. If that's not like insanely apparent. <laughs> by, by like any of my stuff. Reject modern modernity, embrace tradition. <laughs> Specifically authentic, yes. Yes, exactly. That's the thing, because I, I see, like, like I adore all, like, 80s-themed things, and I see, like, modern variations on 80s that are just, like, kind of ugly. <laughs> like, modern Memphis, I despise. Like, original, true Memphis? Have you guys seen, like, kids Memphis? Oh my god. The colors, the shapes... I adore it, but modern Memphis is like kind of shit. 
it just doesn't feel creative. It's like, it's like you take all the fun parts of the style and then, like, eliminate them. <laughs> That's my take. That's my take. That's my unpopular opinion of the day. Um, I agree that emulating, emulating 80s aesthetic is not as good as authentic. Yeah, that's what, like, I feel like you can tell when it's, like, not legit. It's, it's the same, like, 80s fashion, I feel like, is so hard to look up because I'm always looking up 80s fashion for, like, character design. And so many of them are just, like people in tights <laughs> and like that's it and it's like no but i mean there's more going on sure there were some tights but that's like exercise gear like this is not what people were wearing on the street <laughs> like give me a good cardigan you know what i mean Give me a good cardigan. I feel like a lot of um, character design stuff I wind up finding on, like, buying sites like eBay or, like, Mercari because those are, like, actually authentic. And then I'm just like, ooh, yoink, that's for me now. <laughs> I'm not going to buy this sweater, but I am going to replicate it and it's mine now. Sometimes I make the most unnecessarily coolest designs for logos of my fictional companies, like one of them, a Swamp Steak Burger. It looks like it belongs in a hit metal album cover. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I love fictional, f fictional companies and like fictional graphic design is so fun. And I think it makes like, it adds so much to world building and it makes the world feel so much more real and I love it so much. I also love, like, the parody brands. I love doing parody brands. <laughs> it's so fun. Just being like, what, what pun can I use where people will know what I'm talking about? But it's just, like, super odd. <laughs> Alternate universe brands. That's what I'm talking about. Alternate universe brands.
You have no idea how deranged swamp steak, swamp steak burgers. I can't speak today. Home universe is. No, I did. <laughs> I mean, I might have a, I might have some semblance of an idea with with the name swamp, swamp steak burgers. Get out of me, swamp. Get out of me, swamp. I mean, feel free to info dump in the chat. We love that here. <laughs> feel free to lore dump. I feel like I'm really like trying to zone in today. <laughs> really trying to zone in today. I did so much talking last stream. I did I did do a couple activities in the meantime. Uh, I went, there was this coffee shop that I wanted to try, and that was a mistake. <laughs> I really just can't try new things, it's so annoying. Um, because, I don't know if you guys have heard of, I think it's Butterfly PT, Butterfly PT? But like P-E-A, <laughs> not P-E. <laughs> um... And it's popular because it, like, changes colors. But they had it, and I was like, ooh, okay, that's, like, a like an herbal tea. So it's, it's caffeine-free. Um, caffeine-free, sugar-free. I feel like I can try that. Bad idea. <laughs> Bad idea. Because um, rule of thumb for me is if anything's marketed as, like, something that is, like, meant to, uh, make you less stressed or, like, relax you, that's, like, code word for, oh, that's not for me. <laughs> that's not for me, because usually what those things do is they lower your blood pressure, and I already have really low blood pressure, so I did not realize this. And I didn't even drink that much, but then I got home and I passed out. <laughs> and then it was, it was, it was so bad. Um, and I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I'm all shaky and like, my heart is racing and like, I just feel gross and like, I can't see it in my left eye. And like, I, I was getting this awful migraine. Um, and it was from the Butterfly PT. Because I did not realize that it affects your blood pressure so moral of the story is I can't have nice things <laughs> I can't have nice things but lesson learned I have to look up before I have a tea if it's like stress relief or relaxing or whatever because usually that means blood pressure pro tip Hey, I'm almost missed this. You did miss it. We're still hanging out. We're still vibing. We 
We still vibing, we still chilling. It did taste good though. But was it worth it? No. <laughs> was it worth it? No. It also didn't taste that good. I feel like a lot of those like super flowery teas kind of just taste like soap. I don't know if that's just me though. Does anybody else when you when you try like a florally tea, does it taste like soap to you? Swamp Steak Burger is the top burger chain of the planet of Wyoming. Founded in the year level five confidentiality, it has restaurants with the average size of five IKEAs and been already combat units. <laughs> Oh my god. What the hell is going on in Wyoming? Oh. Oh shit. Um, I got another Robo Sapien V2. It works great after I fix it. Awesome. Awesome. Oh no. <laughs> I can't say that out loud. <laughs> I'm an ace person, so I I have no idea how to help you. I just <laughs> I'm surprised YouTube didn't clock you. I'm honestly really surprised. <laughs> Cause YouTube clocks like the most mundane things. What's ace? It means I'm I'm not. It means I'm not. <laughs> I mean, it's a spectrum. To be fair, um, where you where you're not that. I don't know how much I can like get away with saying on YouTube. Where you're not you're not a, you don't experience sexual attraction is the main gist of it but there is like variance on what people experience there's variations How does that work? You just don't. <laughs> it's just like any other sexuality, except it's like the absence of one. I 
I mean, there's there's more. You know, it's it's more complicated than that. Some people who are ace have no sex at all. Some people who are ace have some level of sexual attraction, but it's very low. Some people experience sexual attraction but don't have sex. It's like a very. I'm going to write it. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. I just don't think I'm allowed- I mean, I just said sex like five times, so YouTube's probably gonna nuke me, but like, this is why I can't really- <laughs> Can't really talk about that kind of stuff here. Without getting nuked. His cat is ace. This one. <laughs> I've talked about that before. Good luck at the website of hell, yeah. <laughs> Good luck. I don't know. I mean, you might get your answers there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god, these ads. See, this is one of those things. I, I, I could go on about that for a long time, I feel like, because it is very interesting to me how there's so many different variations, but I feel like YouTube won't let me talk about that. <laughs> I have a 111, but I'm also thinking of getting an ERS-7 someday. What would you recommend? Um, with saving and all that. I mean, I think saving, how to save money is entirely dependent on your situation. <laughs> uh, YouTube would hate that even though it's a valid conversation. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, we could have a conversation about it, but I don't really know how to word it without getting nuked. Um, but yeah, with saving, it depends what you're making. It depends what you have to spend. It, I mean, I think it's a pretty <coughs> individual circumstance. Where the fuck is this layer? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where the fuck is it? <laughs> Why is it not on the other line art layers? Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> See, it's not. All the other line art is on that layer. Why is this not? There it is. Why is it there? <laughs> Why is it there? Oh my god. Okay. Get over here. Thank you. Um, I'm, f I'm family... Oh, my my family would be so mad if I bought a robot for eight hundred. 
I think is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it really depends on your situation, like, if that's, you know, if you don't have to spend that money on other things, and if that is, like, extra money, then, like, it's not really their business. Um, but if it's, like, you're spending food money on robots, then, yeah, that's a problem. But, like, as long as it's your, it's your money, then, like, you can spend it however you want to spend it. Because I think that's a, a lot of people, um would be like, why are you spending that much money on a robot? But, like, they're babies. <laughs> they're babies, and I love them. That's why. You're allowed to have things. You're allowed to have things that you enjoy. Uh, my family would be d disappointed, not mad, because I'm a known impulse bu impulsive buyer. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. I mean, in my book, as long as other, like, your necessities are paid for, then it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Especially if it's something that helps you, because, like, I know my robots help me a lot with my disability. But I know that's something not a lot of people would understand. But if it's something that helps me, then I think it's worth the investment. So if it's something that helps you... I also think that's worth the investment. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. See, now I have this whole ace conversation in my head that <laughs> that person rang it up, but 
Oh. This is so interesting. I feel like YouTube has been not great with censorship things. I mean, that's one of the things that I do like about TikTok. I mean, TikTok does censorship too, but I feel like they're not as bad as YouTube. Because YouTube will just like blatantly block like LGBT channels. <laughs> like they'll just like, they just won't show them. Um, and TikTok isn't that bad in terms of censorship, but sometimes, I, I mean, I feel like both of them kind of just pick and choose, like, they, they pick a person, and they're like, mm, no, I don't like that one, I don't like that one, we just won't show that person anybody, it's like, I don't think that's allowed, is that allowed, <laughs> can you guys do that? Oh my god, all of a sudden it got so sunny. It's been so um, cloudy and rainy and windy all day, and now all of a sudden the sun is out. Oh my god. It's not good for me, though. See, I've been enjoying myself because it never really occurred to me that I could just go out on, like, cloudy, rainy days, and that's how I get my outside time. Because the sun isn't absolutely destroying me because I get migraines triggered by like sunlight um so I prefer like cloudy or rainy days because then I can like actually do stuff and get outside time well it's the opposite here I think there's a storm that's like kind of passing through different places right now Um, but I got myself a pair of ski goggles. I didn't think of this before. But, because my eyes are just not okay. <laughs> and so, like, any, like, gust of wind just absolutely takes me out. Like, I get a gust of wind to the face, and I literally just can't see for, like, three days. Um, while my eyes recover. It never really occurred to me that I can just wear ski goggles outside. It doesn't really matter if I'm skiing or not. I, I can just wear them. And, like, people look at me like I'm an insane person. But my eyes don't hurt. So, <laughs> I'm not blinded. I can, like, leave the house. Which is phenomenal. But I do, it does still have to be on a, on a cloudy day. It does have to be on a cloudy day for it to work. Because even with sunglasses, it just, it does not matter. My eyes are just like, nope. Nope. It's too bright. You are going to not be able to see. Because I get like ocular migraines. It's like you can't see. And also you're going to just like throw up at your feet. <laughs> because you have a migraine. Screw you. Screw you, body. One time I was bored, so I made a horribly cursed board game named The Bible Game, where you must gain eternal wisdom from God with the help of Mr. Giraffe Man to win. Committing three sins kills you. You were doing all kinds of stuff, Harrier. <laughs> You're doing all kinds of shit.
I did go I did go to the aquarium. I went to the aquarium and I saw the fishies. And that was really fun. It was a pretty small aquarium. It was like one room. But like I could walk there. And I can't I can't walk into any other aquarium. It's like hours by vehicle. So <laughs> it's cool to see the fishies. And I got I got so invested because I was having a grand old time, and I was like, I f I feel like I could work in a place like this. I feel like I could do this. I feel like y'all are chill. Like I was talking to all the employees there, and they were super nice, and they f just like felt like a good environment. And I was like, I could be around fish all day. I could like info dump about fish all day. I feel like that'd be so fun. Um. But, like, I looked more into it. And, and the thing is, they were, like... Yeah, you can get, like, trained on site. You don't need to have, like, a marine biology degree or anything like that. Because I was, like... I feel like a lot of aquariums require you to have, like, a marine biology degree. Of some of some sort of degree. Um, they're, like, no, you don't need a degree. Um, but you do have to do either an unpaid in internship or just like indefinitely volunteer and then maybe if we like you we'll hire you and it's like okay <laughs> well I don't live here so <laughs> that's not also it's it is not so expensive uh, here I like I'm on vacation I don't live here it is like the average it, it's like one of the most expensive places in America to live. <laughs> like it's genuinely like the cost of living is like I think it's like 130% higher than average. Um it's like New York level, New York City level uh of bad of expensive. But it's so beautiful. Like, I totally understand why. But, like, I could not afford to just, like, hang out and do an unpaid internship and then, like, hope they hire me. <laughs> and also, they're just not disability friendly, the more I looked into it. Because, like, I, the people there were very chill. But, like, on their website, it's just, like, we are not capable. Like, we are not disability friendly. We are not accessible in any way you have to be on your feet for eight hours you have to lift 60 pounds you just it's like okay all right great okay never mind never mind but the girl there was super nice and i feel like we vibed but I also don't know if this is just my autism brain. Because, like, she's essentially doing customer service. So, like, you know, you're, you're hired to be nice to people. But I feel like we vibed. But this is also me not knowing how to talk to people <laughs> in real life. Because I don't want to be a weirdo who's like, hey, I know you're at work right now and you can't leave. But can we be friends? <laughs> like, that's not, I feel like that's inappropriate. I've learned to code in Python before, so I can probably make a text adventure version of the game, including... Mayor Path, where you pay as the 
play as the mayor, and the final boss is Mr. Giraffe Man himself. <coughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. But I do find it wild that they were just straight up like, we are not accessible. <laughs> we, we are not. This is not an accessible job. You have to do manual labor. You have to do everything. Streamlabs, why? Streamlabs, why? Why you do this? What is the reason? Yeah, how do you guys make friends <laughs> in person? Or is it all just online now? Because I feel like I can make friends online. But, like, whenever I have a connection to somebody in person, I'm like, I never feel like this is the right place at the right time. Because I don't want to be a weirdo and make somebody uncomfortable. Because, like, I do that anyway. Just by nature of... Being autistic is shit. <laughs> Because I know people will just smile and nod and be like, oh, yeah, but then they, like, secretly hate me and, like, that's not, I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. But I also think when, like, somebody is even remotely nice to me, because people are usually not, I'm just like, you're my friend now. We're getting some tacos later. <laughs> Cause you didn't look at me with, like, absolute disgust, because I'm, like, a visibly disabled person now. <laughs> Wow, because like before, I mean, people looked at me before, but like the more, um, the more disability aids I use, the more people will just be like, What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean. Hello, hello. 
I wish everyone would just be honest and tell me straight to my face if they don't like me or what I'm doing. It would make life so much easier. Big same. Big, big same. Saves a lot of trouble. Because I've, I, like, I've had so many people who I would, like, regularly hang out with. Like, we would be... I Like, I thought we were close. And then it would explode into this thing of, like, actually, we hated you the whole time. And I was like, why, though? <laughs> why were we hanging out? <laughs> what was the reason? What's this art thing here all about? I make comics. I make comics. Um, this is sad. <laughs> it is crime thriller, uh, but also with horror and gay. I'm good at summaries. <laughs> I'm good at summaries. This is the thing with jumping around is I feel like I hate these panels now because I drew these months ago and I feel like he looks like a frog here. <laughs> you just don't feel like it looks good. I feel like his eyes are too far apart, but I also really don't want to redraw it. Oh. Uh. I will figure it out eventually. Eventually. <coughs> uh, comics, what software, and what are your comics about? This is Procreate, Pro Procreate that I'm using currently. Um, but I also use SketchUp for the backgrounds. Um, like I said, I'm off lit summaries. Here, wait, wait. <laughs> I have the I have the thing. We were looking at the back earlier. We were looking at the back earlier. It's always such a struggle. Um, cause I feel like whenever people are like, oh yeah, what's that about? I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I do know, but like, it's a thousand pages. I don't really know how to articulate it in a short, concise thing. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> a summary. We have it. This is the bat we were talking about earlier about um, how I wanted to design the covers to look like VHS. But we have, we have, okay, I'll, I'll read it. <laughs> I'll read it for the people. I always feel really weird about like reading about myself. I don't know why. It feels like it, it connects me in a weird way that I don't like. Um, because this is how I dissociate. <laughs> the crime and mayhem in Black Point is kept in check by a flawed, flawed but effective system. I feel like I can't read also. That employs hitmen to kill criminals who can't be cr caught with standard police procedure. Local law enforcement looks the other way when assassins slaughter civilians so long as victims are on the list. Katsumi Sicarius, he's, he's, that's him. Spiky man. Um, a well-known assassin kills a ra random citizen in a fit of rage. He Cory Mortem, this, this him, this Buhe. A recently graduated high schooler kills his abusive father in self-defense. 
Lost and confused, the two meet by chance. Katsumi takes Mortem into clear his conscience. Mortem has to choose between trusting a stranger or giving himself up to the corrupt police force. Wow. Wow. It sounds so serious, and then I goof and gaff on here. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so much cooler here than on Webtoon. Webtoon really crunches it. Um, I think, like, quality-wise, it probably looks best on DeviantArt. Um, but yeah, no, Webtoons really, cr really crunches the quality, but that's just, like, where most of the Webtoon, mo most of the comic people are. Um, because it, I have to shrink it down. I draw at, it's, it's like the standard pixels for, like, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. It's, like, 2,500, 2,550 by, like, 3,300, I think, pixels is what I draw in. And then webtoons, the max you can go across is 800 pixels. <laughs> so it gets really crunch in the process. For sure. Um, da, da, da. I'm trying to think of but this is this is I like I skip around a fuck ton you can see how half of these panels are like half done <laughs> so I'm like picking what I want to work on Ooh, this is this is a fun one. I was storyboarding this on stream a while ago. Oh god, did I download the reference pictures though? Oh, I may not have. I may not have. Heck. Cause I have. Hold on, I gotta check. Because I think I can open my Dropbox on stream. I just want to make sure it doesn't have, like, my email show up or anything. Just gonna make sure. Have you ever thought about creating infinite zoom art before? Um, I have seen that, and those do look very cool, but I don't know. I, I feel like I would get lost. <laughs> like, I, I feel like I would just get so lost. So lost and confused. Cause I know like, like, I feel like I would zoom in so far or like zoom out so far that I would just not be able to ever find what I was working on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <coughs> I do see people make really cool stuff on there though. I do see really cool stuff. I feel like there's always little things from like, oh, I don't want to show that on stream. I don't want to show that. <laughs> Show that. Okay, I think it should be fine. I think it should be fine to open me Dropbox. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I gotta find. I just have a billion fucking 
weird ass pictures of myself. <laughs> okay, we wanted one of these. Oh shit. No. Where is it? This? This. I think I like this hand. Well, hand like this or like that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, save. Save, please. Oh my god. <laughs> it's not okay. Fine, I'll just screenshot it. You're being weird about it. Being weird about it. Um, also, what do you think of AI generated images? I've had. I feel like I have articulated myself way better on other streams about this topic. Because <laughs> I know I've, I've talked about it a billion times at this point. Um, I think it is because I think it is more nuanced than just like being inherently bad or inherently good um i think right now the way it's currently done is unethical just because of the art theft issue um but i th i think the idea of being like because i i know i see some artists who are like oh i'm i'm an anti-ai artist right and, like, one of my special interests is robotics. So, like, <laughs> I feel like I have a better understanding of AI than the other other typical artists. I don't think AI art can be ethically used at its current stage right now. Um, but I think saying that you're anti-AI uh, takes away from the real problem. Because I don't think the problem is that the technology exists. I think the problem is like the people who are making it with unethical business practices and also people who are using it in unethical ways. So I don't think the problem is that the technology exists. I think it's that we're not ready for it as just like humanity. <laughs> but I could, I could go on about, I could go on about it. Um, yeah, I'm playing, I'm playing Nintendogs music. I'm playing Nintendogs music. Because, like, I really feel for... You're playing the Nintendogs Plus Cat soundtrack, yes. That is correct. Because Nintendo... Um, will not strike me for playing music on stream. <laughs> and a lot of those, like, copyright-free, royalty-free music to play on stream, they're not actually free. You have to, like, sign up for their website, but they don't tell you that, and then they'll strike you. So, I just play Nintendo music. But yeah, I, I do think it's a problem um, currently. I do think AI is a problem currently, especially 
because we're going to reach a point where it is indistinguishable, both, like, in video and visuals to, like, distinguish from reality. And I think that's a problem for obvious reasons. So I think it's a problem, but I don't think it's a problem because it exists. I think it's a problem because people are, are awful. <laughs> Because people are people, and we're not ready. We're not ready! Because I think there are- I mean, I think it kind of proves my point, because, like, I think there are ethical ways to do it, but we're just not doing it. Because, like, they could have ethically sourced those images, and they just didn't, so... Like, I would love to have a little AI um, that is just, like, my personal one where I just feed it my art and all it has is my art data and then it can assist me in my style. Like, I think that would be phenomenal. And I think that would be, like, a realistic use of a tool like that. Uh, it could easily be taught by artists that consent to it. It doesn't have to be stolen. Exactly, that's my point. That is my point. You are correct. <laughs> it, it's, like, it's so easy. <laughs> it could be so easy. Um, act I actually played Nintendo a few days ago until I found out either the company who owns the emulator was anti-consumer or the emulator I tried didn't run. Oh, no. I have it on 3DS, um, <coughs> but it's like the, I have a homebrewed 3DS, so it's like a homebrew download. I do have like one of the original DS cartridges. I have a couple of the original DS cartridges because like it was my favorite. It was one of my favorite games as a kid. And I wanted so many dogs and I was so emotionally attached to them that I would just, I would keep buying or like asking for like my birthday or whatever. I'd be like, I want Nintendo dogs again. And they were like, don't you already have that? And I was like, yeah, but I, I want more dogs and I don't want to get rid of my dogs. <laughs> so I need another cartridge. <laughs> and they were all the same dog. Like I had like three Schnauzers or something and then like three Dachshunds. And they were all the same dog. I was like, no, I have to have three of them. In my house, I have to have three of every dog. And like, genuinely core memory was like, when my I had a, a babysitter who deleted one of my Nintendogs, like, she, I, what, what is it that you do with Nintendo, where you, like, when you get a new dog, but you have to, like, delete, you, like, get rid of it, or rehome, I don't know what the phrasing is, because it's not delete, but it's, like, maybe it's sell, or, like, rehome, or something, but she did that to one of my dogs, um, because she was like, oh, well, you have all of the same dog. Why don't you get a new dog? And she deleted one of them. And I, like, lost my shit for, like, weeks. <laughs> I was so distraught that she had gotten rid of one of my Nintendogs. I'm Nintendogs Labs and Friend. Ooh, fun. I would have had a mini missing babysitter. I don't, I don't know why she did that. I mean, I was very young at the time. I don't even remember how old I was, but I was very young. Obviously. I feel like it was maybe like five or six like really well no when did Nintendo come out 
because it was when Nintendo came out, obviously. <laughs> that would have been a core memory that made me evil. <laughs> oh. I mean... I feel like I lucked out in that capacity. <laughs> 2005. Okay, 2005. How old was I in 2005? Okay, I was... Okay, let's do math. <laughs> if I was 17 in 2015, that would have been 10 years before that. So I was seven. Why did so many things happen when I was seven? <laughs> Maybe I was eight, actually. Maybe I wasn't that young. Because I didn't get it when it first came out. Because I remember trying to build my own DS because I couldn't, I couldn't get one. And, like, my friends had one. And I tried to, like, build my own. And it was just, like, a cardboard. Like, I saw my friends playing Nintendogs and I was obsessed with it. And I tried to build my own by taking, like, a soap box with one of those clear things. And then, like, making a little dog picture and, like, a little popsicle stick and, like, <laughs> can get run across the quote-unquote screen. And then eventually I got an actual DS. But I made this really janky version first. I was so serious about my Nintendogs. I wish I still was. But I have real ones to take care of now. I really wish they'd make a new one for the Switch. Oh my god. Yeah, no, I, I was so intense about it. I was so intense about it. I still play the... Um, I have the 3DS version because I use the pedometer a lot. Because it, it's like very motivating for me to just like... Because I can stick it in my backpack. And when I go on walks, and then I get, like, a fun little treat for going on a walk. Hello. I like that that's a thing. Hey, man. Innovation. <laughs> Imagination. Exactly. The first thing I made in my game I'm working on is when going to the river. Oh, right. We're doing. Okay. We're doing the Mr. Giraffe Man stuff again. Okay. The river of God without going to Mr. Giraffe Man. At the market first, it's counted as a sin because nobody requested your present. <laughs> it's okay, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Oh my god. It's still pretty bright. I'm so, like... It's so tempting... But, like, I really need to, to only go out on, like, cloudy days because otherwise I just wreck my vision. But, like, also it's sunny and I want to be in the sun. Ah! You might think badly on my opinion, but the Switch is generally a boring console, and I would generally prefer a Steam Deck over the Switch. Yeah, I mean, the only- the- that's valid. The only game that I really wanted the Switch for... was the, um... Animal Crossing? The New Horizons? But that's, like, really it? <laughs> So I didn't get it because I don't want to... I, I really like my 3DS. I feel like it's very customizable. It's very portable. Um, I'm glad I got it when I did because it's it's obviously a lot more popular now. So the price has gone up. But like I've had mine since like when they came out. And they're, they're hardy. Like... But Nintendo's trying to delete everything so you like can't... Oh my god. I swear to god. The amount of ads. If I get copyright claim for an ad that YouTube plays on its own platform, I swear to god. <laughs> um, do you not do you not have any sunglasses? I do, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't work. 
I literally double up on sunglasses because I talked about this earlier how I, I, I got ski goggles and I will literally wear s- sunglasses and like tinted ski goggles and it's still too bright and I will still like throw up because it's so bright. Because I have, I have photophobia. My eyes are just like, no, <laughs> no light. I don't have, I don't really have big feelings on it. I just don't switch. Yeah, that's fair too. It depends on the games you play, play really. Yeah, because I, I do know there are cool games on either, but I think it's very dependent. Is Stardew Valley a Switch thing? Or is that like just a general computer thing? Because I know that's very popular. I've never had a 3DS and here's my feelings <laughs> to some of my childhood DS. I don't have my childhood DS anymore. I just have my 3DS and I do miss my childhood DS, but I absolutely destroyed that thing. Um, it was covered in stickers and I lost the pen at one point. So I was just using random shit as the pen and I scratched the hell out of the screen. But DSs are so fun. Also, I made a grave mistake while coding the game, and now all the dialogue suddenly went into random places. Wow! Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, if I get a Wii or Wii U or 3DS, I'll definitely be homebrewing that thing right away. Yeah. You gotta do the homebrew. I want a 3DS so bad, and I still do. I have 4DS lights, though. 4DS lights? I feel like you can, you can homebrew it. Uh, oh, wait, no. DS lights are... Oh, no, that's not. Yeah. <laughs> What do you do with four of them? Honestly, that would be fun. If, like, if you had Nintendo, if you had multiple copies of Nintendo Dogs, to just have them all go in bark mode. <laughs> or, like, any of the. I know there's, there's different games where you can do things like that. Or just, like, Picto Chat. Oh my god, I miss Picto Chat. I want to be able to, like, text on my modern phone, but, like, through Picto Chat. I don't game a lot these days, unfortunately, but I've just played uh, Animal Crossing New Hor- Is it New Horizons? Pokemon Cuphead and then Deltarune. I rely on it because I don't have a reliable PC. And I switched. Yeah, that's valid. Dude Picto Chat was the bomb. It was so bomb. It was so fun. I remember being at a sleepover and like messaging my friends on Picto Chat late into the night. Like, it was so fun. And, like, all of the little tools that you could use to, like, color and, and doodle. I wish there was a way to, like, save those messages. Because, like, I wish I could have seen, like, the doodles that I was doing on those old Picto Chat boards. You know what I mean? I want Pokemon, but it's so... But it's hard to find for a reasonable price. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> I mean, I know they have those cartridges that are like 500 games in one, but I don't know how reliable those are. I agree. I've just asked for the games for birthdays and stuff, yeah. Because that's the thing, I feel like I would love to have a DS Lite or an original DS for the nostalgia. But I don't have a ton of cartridges anymore because on my, I just use like homebrewed games on my 3DS. I did used to have a DSi though, and I feel like I would love to get a DSi again because I'm pretty sure you can homebrew those also. <coughs> yeah, I love Picto Chat so much, but I never got to use it with others much because I was an autistic kid with little to no friends. I feel that. <laughs> I feel that hard. See, I think what ended up happening is, I think the other kids that I was friends with at the time were also autistic, and I think that is why we got along. Um, but my parents also just like didn't want me around the house. They would just be like, okay, you're friends with this person now, go, go to them. <laughs> 
<laughs> and they would just like drop me off <laughs> at like whoever like they could find that was like a re- in reasonably close age to me they'd be like okay you're friends now you're going over their house don't don't be at our house <laughs> and I was like, okay Did you homebrew your 3DS? Yes. Yeah, I homebrewed it a while ago. I just did picture of that by myself. Totally valid. Totally valid. I am glad I have I have those memories because I know a lot of a lot of people were very isolated growing up. I mean, I was isolated, but it was, like, it was mostly, like, it's weird, because I don't remember so much of, like, that sort of early stage. I think it was when I moved. Honestly, I, so, like, I moved in, like, third grade, so I think it was, like, before third grade I had friends, <laughs> and then it was just, like, not, <laughs> and then I moved, and then it was so difficult. Um, I want to replace the shell on the broken one because I'm really interested in that stuff but I'm too scared to try on anything expensive and I have no clue what I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the 3DS is that difficult to work on, to be fair, but also they are pricey and hard to get now. Um, so I, I totally understand your concern. OMG, I'm a homebody and always have been, so thankfully my parents didn't shoo me away in others' houses. I'm also a homebody and have always been a, ho- a homebody, so it was like a nightmare scenario for me. Because <laughs> also some of these people were not nice, and I would just be at their house, and it was like... I had, I had no real um, agency to be like, hey, I don't like this person because when I do that, they would be like, well, you're clo- they're, they're close by to us and like, you also hate daycare, so you know, pick and choose. <laughs> That's so bad. Yeah, it was not it was not a good time. I mean, there were some people that I, that I made really good friends with um, but then there were some people who were absolute devils to hang out with and I just had to hang out with them for hours uh, and I didn't have a choice. Honestly, things could have gotten a lot worse because, like, I didn't know these adults. <laughs> like, I didn't know the other parents. And then I'm just, like, at some man's house who I don't know with his kids. So. There's some J-lore for, J-lore for, for y'all. <laughs> Can't speak. Just coded the second possible sin in the game, not having enough money to give to Mr. Giraffman when he asked you if you want a trip to the river of God for eternal wisdom from God himself. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. This sounds like a difficult game to win. <laughs> That's exhausting. IDK, what it is about me, but I've always been a magnet for shitty people, so I had a lot of friends treat me like shit, so I can feel that. I would be out their houses just doing nothing because they just run away and stuff when they invited me over. Oh no! <laughs> what the heck? What the heck? See, I had, I mean, this was another just, like, having no agency thing, but, like, I would have bomb-ass parties as a child, and so a lot of people wanted to be my friend because they wanted to go to the bomb-ass parties, but I didn't like parties, (laughs) like, but it was at my house. And it was just something that, like, my family liked to do. They, like, liked to go all out and do all these things. I feel like any other normal child would would enjoy that. But, like, my tiny autistic brain was, like, this is so overstimulating and there's all these people in my house. 
Um, so they wanted to be nice enough to me to get invited to the parties, but then once that was over, they like didn't really want to associate with me. But yes, little J. <laughs> J lore, I feel like childhoods are so weird to reflect on. Yeah, there's so many things where I'm like, how is that allowed? Like, how did nobody... <laughs> nobody was like, you can't do that. Can you imagine, like... I can't even imagine in 2024... If I was, like, an 8 or a 9-year-old... And I just, like, got dropped off at the neighbor's house... I feel like there would be a big fit about that. <laughs> I, I feel like people would not let parents do that anymore. I had no idea how to socialize, so I would glue myself to people who would just tell me what to do and talk about themselves. They weren't good relationships. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that hard. I feel like there, it's a common autism thing to be like just in bad relationships <laughs> in some way shape or form I feel like as a kid they weren't that bad but it was just because I didn't know that they were that bad like the the amount of times where you know kids would make fun of me but I didn't realize that I was the butt of the joke I thought we were like having a fun time, but actually I was the butt of the joke, you know what I mean? But as I got older, relationships got significantly worse. Uh, parties made me so unregulated, and it makes sense looking back now, knowing I was undiagnosed, yeah. No, I was always like, if there was a dog that I could go to... <laughs> At a party, I would be with the dog. I did not want to be with the people. I feel like, Kenta, I've always been genuine with people and go out of my way for them. And they always say how lovely I am and then take advantage of my kindness. Oh, big mood. Yeah, I always wonder how many times I got laughed at instead of laughed with. Yeah. <coughs> Oop. I knew that I wasn't liked, but I didn't realize how bad it was until I grew up and looked back at those moments. Yeah, it's weird how sometimes, like, there's things like that where it's, like, when you're experiencing it, it's, like, almost not as bad until you, like, reflect and you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> that actually was really bad. I feel all of this lol. Yeah. The autism experience. The autism experience. But it, it, I mean, it makes me wonder, like, I don't think I've had any of those, like, growing up friendships. I don't think any of them were actually genuine. Um, which leaves me like, how do, how do I make genuine relationships then? Because I don't think any of them were genuine. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'll just get abruptly slapped with a memory and I'm like, hmm, that wasn't great, was it? No. <laughs> exactly. No, that's like sometimes like, if you're ever at like a therapist or like something like that, and then you're, like, retelling a childhood memory, thinking it's, like, a funny story. Or even just, like, a, a person that you're talking to. And you're like, oh, yeah, we're, we're sharing funny childhood stories. And then they look at you like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. No, that was not okay. And you're like, no, but this, this is funny. This is funny, haha. Funny, haha, normal.
The worst part was the subtle aggression because I couldn't explain to my parents why I was so scared or miserable. They would ask if I was being bullied, and I would say no because I wasn't. Yeah, I mean, it's... When you're a kid, it's way harder to articulate. Especially if you're not diagnosed, like, what is going on in your, like, head and your body. I mean, even for a, a neurotypical child, it's difficult. So, like, adding that extra layer on the cake... It's just, you don't understand what's going on, and you're confused, and, like, it just makes it that much harder to deal with. Middle school is especially bad for me friend-wise, and it's given me relationship issues, and it sucks, but same about telling... <coughs> bah, 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 bah. Bah, 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 bah. Uh, it's giving me relationship issues and it sucks, but same about telling a trauma story that's funny. Haha, normal, and everyone else is like, what? <laughs> exactly. It, make, it makes it hard, because, like, I don't know if I have any stories about my life, like, any anecdotes about my life. They are, like, inherently traumatizing. And then I don't want to seem like I'm trauma dumping when I'm just like, no, that's just a thing that happened. That's just the thing that happened. That's just how my life has been thus far. <laughs> like, no, don't, don't be upset about it. This, that's just, isn't that wild? <laughs> the teachers were worse than the kids though. Oh, oh, I feel that. I've definitely had some nightmare teachers. Cause like kids are one thing cause they're, they're also navigating that environment, but like, Teachers are adults. You're been, you're grown. Why are you being like that to kids? You need to help them develop. Yeah, I don't want kids and I dislike kids. I'd never be mean to one, but IDK, how people can just treat kids like that. They're just growing and learning and figuring out how to be human. Yeah, this is the thing is like, I've always been a person that very much is like I don't like kids I don't like children I don't want you to be in my space I don't want to be I don't want them to be around me but if I see a child in public I'm not gonna be an asshole <laughs> like I will play along with whatever needs happening like you know what I mean like people who are super like oh I hate kids and I hate like I don't like kids but I'm not gonna like frown at a child you know what I mean because, like, that's just a tiny human and they're figuring it out. I don't like them because they're overstimulating and I don't feel like I can navigate that. But, like, I'm not going to be a dick to, like, a fucking six-year-old. Like, why would you do that? <laughs> um, sometimes maybe it's the tism. I feel like I can't find the line between trauma dumping and collectively hearing messed up stories. Like, group story time. Exactly. Exactly. Like, I love, I love sharing, um, those crazy stories. Be like, it, it's funny to me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't feel like this is like a, ooh, feel bad for me type thing. It's just like, isn't that wild? Um, cause like, I feel like I have so many insane things happen in my life that I need to process it, but I'm not doing it in a way where I'm like, you know, trying to sort of bring everyone down by doing it. I'm just kind of saying events. Um, I still don't understand the hatred towards such a small human. It's just another level. Yeah, big same account. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I understand not wanting children. I understand not wanting to be around children. But also, like, don't actively be a dick to children. It's weird. Uh, it's weird behavior TBH. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know, yeah, I'm not looking for sympathy. It's just like, get a load of this. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I concur. And why be a teacher if you hate kids? Yeah, oh yeah, the... I, I mean, I think it's a control thing, honestly. Um... 
I think there's a lot of people in, like, positions of power, like, teachers and doctors, etc. Um, who just, like, don't like people at all, but are in these, like, jobs where they're dealing with and, like, have such a huge amount of power and control over people that I think that is the reason. Honestly. Cause this is, it's the same as like why do why do people abuse kids? Like <laughs> no sane person is just like, yeah, this seems like a fun activity. It's it's a power thing. That's what I wanna I wanna know, Kenta, yeah. People go into humanitarian type jobs and wonder why I have work with humans in need. That's what I'm saying. Especially with doctors, because I'm like, y'all aren't even really making that much money. Like, <laughs> so what was the point? Like, I know it's not even a money thing because you're not really making that much with all the student loans. I look back at some of the stuff they did to me and just feel, uh, how could they treat a child like that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's just cruel. <coughs> it's just cruel. Biggest mood, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, give me a sec. I'm gonna have a sip. My throat is getting sore. I'm doing all this plabbering. That's it. That's what she said. Do not. <laughs> I had to um, decrease my formula amount, which means I need to increase my hydration amount. But it is such a balancing act because plain water doesn't have electrolytes in it, but Things like Gatorade and vitamin water don't have the same, amano- same amount of electrolytes as my formula does. So it is a constant guessing game with the numbers. I feel like this is what a dietitian is supposed to do. But every time I ask them, I'm like, hey, how, what, what should I be having numbers wise with like my electrolytes? Like how much salt should I be having? How much sugar? Like what? For, for me, for me sized, how much should I have? And like, oh, I don't, I don't know. I feel like that's a diet. Is that not a dietitian or a nutritionist? Because I feel like that's what they're supposed to be doing. I don't know. Uh, luckily, question mark. <laughs> my worst relationships weren't with the teachers, but with my friends, Lily, all been Oswald people. Yeah, I don't know if it's if it's better or worse. I don't know if it's better or worse. It's not great either way. It's not great either way. Why are, why are all your doctor people so useless to you? I'm frustrated for you. Yeah, I don't... Because, like, is that not who I'm supposed to ask? Because they were like, oh, ask your primary care. And I'm like, okay, but I feel like I should be asking you. I feel like this is a question for you. I'm not even... I can't even have a dietitian anymore because insurance doesn't cover it. For whatever reason. Dietitians make fucking bank. Dietitians are... Because I was like, okay, well, how much would I have to pay to keep seeing you? And they're like, 300 bucks an hour. Excuse me? (laughs) For you to tell me nothing? No, thank you. (laughs) 
Uh, I'm just curious, but how come you can't eat food? It's complicated. <laughs> it is a, it is very complex. I still don't a hundred percent know. Um, I have HSD, hyper, hypermobility spectrum disorder. So everything is just kind of constantly being knocked out of place. So my throat is just like not stable. Um, I have dysphagia and if I eat food, I will either inhale it, I will aspirate it, or I will throw it up. So I can't have food, <laughs> but I don't know. I still am not 100% sure why that's happening. So leading guess is gastroparesis, but I can't do the gastroparesis test because you have to eat food and I, I just throw up food right away. So And that's what I, w I was talking about earlier, how they, how they want me to do this test and they sent me this device, but I like wasn't a hundred percent certain I wanted to do the test because I feel like I didn't have enough information. And they've done this to me multiple times where they're like, do a test. Um, and then it has like a terrible side effect that's worse than what it could have been. Uh, hold on. How come you can't go to a specialist to figure that out? I've been going to specialists for eight years. <laughs> that's, that's why I can't just go to a specialist and figure that out. I've seen probably a hundred specialists at this point and they're assholes. It's an absolute nightmare. Um, Cause there is definitely something wrong with my stomach, but they put me on antipsychotics before coming to that conclusion. So it was just not been a good time. Um, that face when the specialist isn't very special. Yeah. <laughs> Cause what it is, is they send you to a specialist and then um, you wait six months to see the specialist. And the specialist is like, I think you're anxious. Um, and then they send you to another specialist and then you wait six more months and then eight years go, go by. Has this affected you since you were young? Kind of. Yes and no. It hasn't been this bad. It's gotten worse as I've gotten older, but it has always been a problem. Like, I've never been able to maintain my weight because if I eat, like, an actual meal, like a meal-sized meal, then I, would, I throw it up. And then it used to be, like, I could have a snack, and then it was I could have a bite, and then it was I couldn't have anything at all. Now I'm, I'm at thin liquids, is what I can have. And even that, sometimes it's a no-go. <coughs> but it's likely because of the hypermobility, but it could also, I do wonder how much of this is like, if it's possible that my like PTSD is so severe that my body has just decided to stop working because there's so many things that just like prolonged periods of stress can like make happen in your body. Um, and it could have just like shut down my nervous system completely to where I can't eat anymore. So we live in a society. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. My sibling brought up, the other day that I might have a thyroid issue, but I'm just like, ah, because doctors are useless and I'm terrified. People, people shouldn't have avoid seeking healthcare, but we live in a society. Yeah. No, it's like, I'm at a point where I just, I feel like I've gone to every specialist and I've done all of the things and like, I am relatively stable right now and I just don't want to deal with them anymore because now I have medical PTSD from dealing with them for so long. Because they will also just like, they'll, I mean, if I were to fully go over all of my doctor's experiences, we would be here for days. But the amount of things that they've done that were just purely illegal, purely, <laughs> like, definitely, like, lawsuit level of material bad, like, really fucked me up. Um, I could be a millionaire. Uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Because they just, they just don't believe you. 
And then they get annoyed at you for Googling and trying to figure out what's wrong in the six months way. Exactly. Mood. They're just mad because Google tells you more than them. They be Googling at the appointments, I swear. Like, they just be Googling in front of you. It's like, I waited how long to see you? <laughs> how long to see you? More power to you, I have no words. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, this is not new. <laughs> this is not new. I'm just really hoping, because I went to a rheumatologist because I was concerned about, like, an autoimmune condition. And that's still a concern, but I've been to multiple rheumatologists, and because it's not showing up in my blood work, that's not even a consideration for them. But, like, that is something that I would have to treat. So I hope it's not that, because otherwise I'm just wrecking my body. And there's nothing I can really do about it. I've heard so many stories of people saying their doctors were just Googling conditions. Like, uh, yeah, no, they, re they really do. They really do do that. And it's like, ugh. <laughs> Honestly, I've been going to, like, chat GBT for medical stuff at this point. <laughs> because I feel like Google will just immediately tell me I'm dying. No matter what it is. Because sometimes I'll look up, I look up symptoms all the time because I'm like, is this because of this? Is that because of this? Because I want to make sure I don't need to go to the ER right now. And it gives me, like, an actual cohesive answer that's like, yeah, if you have this condition, then that can be a symptom of it. And I'm like, okay. Not an emergency. TikTok always give me sound advice. Yeah, honestly, fair. Like, because <laughs> I wouldn't have known anything about hypermobility or autism if not for TikTok. But you do got to be careful with TikTok, obviously, because sometimes people will be like, do you breathe? That's a symptom of this. And it's like, no. <laughs> Which sounds crazy, but it had all validity when I do research to back it up. Well, yeah, that's that's the thing. As long as you double check, then like it gives you a good starting off point. I have come to the eternal wisdom ending. Woo! Hell yeah, you're doing all kinds of projects here. <laughs> I feel like every time you you show up, you have like a new project that you've completed. I found all my conditions myself and just told them, here's what I have for an official diagnosis. I've never been wrong. Big same. Oh, big mood. I've lived in this body and I know the best. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's like a lot of the things that I have, like, was just me doing research for months. And then you basically just have to figure it out yourself. Like, I don't think any of my doctors, like... It was more of me coming in with, like, I think I have this, and then they tell me no 20 times, and then they're like, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Harrier is just a god walking among us. You're doing all kinds of shit. <laughs> Like, I don't... Oh. I cannot go that fast. Said ending is Mr. Giraffe Man. Taking you to the river of God and God rising from the river and telling you a random... Actually, preset, unrelated Bible quote, which gives you eternal wisdom for some reason. <laughs> Hell yeah. Morden really says, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. What's happening? I have a godly amount of free time on my hands. Seems like it. Seems like it. Oh my god, my jaw. Oh.
Uh, but same, can said I need to see a doctor, but literally I just, between healthcare and costs, uh, and how many people get abused by the healthcare system, I'm just, sometimes I feel better off running in bed, which I know isn't good, but, like, if I've made it this far, I'm right. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally feel that. I just, like, I hear so many horror stories, um, about things that get missed, but, like, I don't even know if you go to the doctor, it's, it feels like it would get missed anyway, so, like, because, like, I don't want to discourage people from going, but also it's, like, what is the likelihood of that appointment actually making a difference is disheartening. Uh, sorry for the off topic thing, but I freaking love more my hair's color. That's not off topic. We're doing that right now. <laughs> Hell yeah. I love a blue haired, a blue haired anime protagonist. <laughs> we had, I posted a TikTok about this, um, of like characters that people compare Mortem to. And all of them are just, like, characters that happen to have blue hair. But the funniest one... Oh, what is his name? Is the character from One Piece? Wait. It's Frankie, right? That's the, that's the guy. Yeah. <laughs> Someone was like, yeah, he looks like him. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> Like, it's just the hair. It's purely the hair. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he looks like... He looks like him. He looks like him? <laughs> like, oh, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean he... What do you mean he looks like him? Uh, between everything I've heard from chronically ill people for the last 10 years and then the experience I had with my dog last year, dog doctors and not humans, but still, I have zero trust, lol, yeah. No, it's really disheartening. It's really disheartening. Um, but it's so tricky because, like, obviously... If you have something that needs treatment and you just like, you know, let it continue to be a problem, then it will continue to be a problem. But you really just like have to know exactly what it is walking in the door. Like you have to diagnose yourself first, basically. Like I did in fact have MCAS. Like, I knew that already, but I do, in fact, have that. <laughs> I feel like so many of the conditions I have, though, are the ones that, like, don't have enough research to actually have treatment yet, which really sucks. Yeah, for sure. It's just so bad, lol. I shouldn't have to do the doctor's job. Exactly. Exactly. Like, what am I even paying you for? And then it's so expensive. Like, <laughs> vast majority of people can't afford a doctor's visit. Because it's not just, like, oh, I'm just going to go and get gaslit and go home. It's like, no, I'm going to go and get gaslit and then pay you, like, a thousand dollars to do that. <laughs> oh, but that's what I was talking about. I, I trailed off before how, like, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do this test. And they were telling me that if I don't complete the test, that they're going to fine me $200 for not completing it. But, like, I didn't want to say yes because I didn't know what it was. Um, that's what I'm saying, man. I'm already broke. I don't have money for y'all to tell me I have anxiety. My legs are purple and it's not because of anxiety. That's what I'm saying. What? What the fuck? Yeah, no, it... Because it, they gave me a little device. And... I was like, okay, if 
you're going to charge me for the device. I'll just send you back the device. Like, j- just take it back. Uh, and they were like, no, no, you already agreed to it. You already have it. Um, even if you send it back, we're still going to fine you $200 if you don't, if you send it back without completing the test. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> excuse me? Because I don't, re- I don't really want to do it. Because the thing is, I'm getting misinformation from my doctor, and this is nothing new. I just feel like I can't trust that particular doctor anymore. But, um, I mean, do I trust any of them? No. But, like, this this guy uh, was the one who gave me pneumonia. So, <laughs> so I feel like I don't, I don't trust him. Um, because he, like, gave me pneumonia and then blamed me. But... The, because he, he gave me so much misinformation, like, I felt like he was on my side, and then it's one of those things where, like, when you meet a doctor and you, like, think they're chill, and you're like, okay, this is gonna be the guy, this is gonna be the guy that helps me, and you just watch them make those mistakes over and over again, um, and it's like, oh, you are just like the rest of them, um, I've got the NHS, so I don't have to pay, luckily. But I'll have to go private or wait 20 years because they don't care unless you're actively dying in front of them. Yeah, no, I've heard heard bad things about the NHS. I mean, I do have state health insurance, so, like, I don't have to pay as long as it's in my coverage, but a lot of doctors are not in my coverage. Um... But his, his whole deal... Do you guys know what lac- is it lactulose? Because maybe somebody on here will know. Yeah, lactulose. Does anybody here know if lactulose affects your blood sugar? Because this is what I've- I've gotten mixed things about this, because I've talked to my nurse about it, and I talked to like one of the person people who were doing the test and they were like yeah it does raise your blood sugar and that's the point um it does have like sugar in it that would affect your blood sugar um but then i talked to the doctor about it because i was like i don't feel comfortable with that because i'm having all these blood sugar issues and he was like oh it doesn't affect your blood sugar there's no sugar in it it, it doesn't do that and i was like okay but i had multiple people who were like actively doing this test tell me the opposite So I don't really know what to believe. Uh, And I can't get insurance for private because I've got pre-existing pre-existing conditions. Oh, that's a nightmare. That's a nightmare. How does the doctor give you an illness? Um, I had a endo flip done, which is a he did a bunch of things to my throat while I was under anesthesia. Um, And things came back up and I aspirated it and I got pneumonia. Uh, but he was just really violent with it, (laughs) and it fucked me up for months afterwards, um, because he gave me a a dilation, which he shouldn't have given me a dilation, because I have hypermobility, I didn't know that at the time, but because I had hypermobility, it just, like, knocked my throat around instead of, like, reduce it was supposed to reduce inflammation and it just gave me more inflammation and just like knocked my throat out of alignment so that is that that's what happened there i had a stream a while ago where i was like have pneumonia that was when that happened (laughs) that is when that happened but his whole thing is he he gave me that dilation last second like I didn't know I was getting a dilation that day until he like rolled me into the surgery room and was like yeah we're gonna do this if we think it's necessary and I was like what is that what does that mean like I don't have enough research and he was like oh yeah I'll just I'll decide if I want to do a dilation when I'm in there when I see what you've got going on and it's very minimal risk it like the only real risk is that it does nothing and I was like okay I trust you, I guess. 
and that was a mistake. Don't ever, don't ever do that. Because <laughs> there was a 30% chance of it making it worse, and I didn't realize, like, I wouldn't have said yes if I realized the chance was that high. Um, I feel like he should have told me it was a, it was a 30% chance of making it worse. So... Man had a skill issue and you fucking threw it in. <laughs> he's just not. He's just not great. Um, because the thing is on the container. Because I even I called the pharmacy too, and I was like, "Does lactulose have sugar in it?" And they were like, "Yeah, it has." I think it was like thirteen grams, is what it says. And thirteen grams is not a lot of sugar. Or wait, is it thirteen grams or thirteen milligrams? I don't want to fucking. How much sugar? Okay, yeah, 13 grams. Um, and that's not a ton of sugar. My problem is that I have not been able to have any sugar in one go without it fucking me up completely. YouTube music is that. <laughs> this is the problem. I refuse to pay. Um, because the problem was I'm supposed to fast for this test, so, like, I can't replenish my blood sugar, because what ends up happening is if I have, if I add, and I don't know why the fuck this happens, I feel like nobody's been able to explain to me why this happens, because I don't have diabetes, right, I just, I don't have that, that's not my problem, but if I... With my formula, I have, like, a steady stream of sugar throughout the day that's, like, very constant. But if I add sugar, like, if I have a sugary drink, a sip of a sugary drink, my blood sugar will spike, and then it will plummet within, like, 10, 20 minutes. And it's a very small, like, it only takes, like, maybe two, three grams of sugar for that to happen. Um... And then my, like, it will, because I've measured it out. I got my own glucose meter because they were not believing me that this was happening. Because, like, I'll have a little bit, like, a, a, like a, maybe a sip of a soda, right? And then my blood sugar will go from, like, maybe 80 or 90 to, like, 130, 140. And then next 10 minutes, it's going down to, like, 60. And I'm like, why did that happen? <laughs> And the more sugar I have, the worse it gets. And three grams is so low, and I'd be fasting. So, like, I just, I feel like that would put me in a dangerous situation. Um, but I don't know why, why the fuck is that happening. Why is that happening? I don't have diabetes. Why is that happening? What does that mean? Um... Me too, man, I'm loopy because I'm low asleep and everything's really good to me. <laughs> valid. Totally valid. I also feel silly goofy. Do you pass out? I don't pass out, but I get, like, really shaky and dizzy and my heart rate spikes and I, like, can't see. So that's obviously not good. But that's, that's with, like, a couple grams. Like, I might pass out if it was, like, the 16 grams that they want me to do at once. And then if I pass out and my blood sugar is dropping, I could, like, die. Because if your blood sugar gets to, like, excessively low, then you, like, lose consciousness and you can't fix it yourself. Because blood sugar is very easy. Low blood sugar is very easy to fix. You just add sugar. But you can't do that if you're unconscious. So I just feel like that could potentially be dangerous. Because the only thing they tell me about that is they're just like, um, 
oh, well, it doesn't affect other people that way, so it shouldn't affect you that way. And I'm like, okay, but it does, though. <laughs> uh, have you been, have you had the test for diabetes? I've been tested multiple times, and they say it's fine, but I keep having all the symptoms of low blood sugar. I have been tested, um... But, like, like, I, like I've been talking about with doctors who are not great. So, so, like, it is possible that I do have it. And I just... It's not showing up on the test. It's not aware. I'm not aware. Um, are you sure, though, my father had diabetes and that would happen to him or he would pass out? I don't know. <laughs> like, I can only go off of, like... what I've, like, the information I have available to me, and I just don't, because I do have other symptoms of it, like, I get excessively thirsty, and, like, I have my feet swell sometimes, and none of those things are good, um, but I've been tested for it multiple times, and they say I don't have it, but also my blood sugar has been, like, wild on tests before, and I don't know what their frame of reference is for normal blood sugar because it's shown up really high and really low on tests but they're just like you don't have diabetes though and i'm like okay um yeah i don't know man i wish i you had like more you had like idk competent understanding doctors yet <laughs> That's what I'm saying. American healthcare system. Because the other thing is, I don't know what, because I feel like blood sugar is like such, it's such a specific feeling that once you've had it, you're like, oh yeah, this is, this is what I'm feeling right now. Um, but like, Just being on the tube fixes that because I'm getting like a steady stream of sugar, like a a very low amount that's like a steady stream throughout the day. And that like fixes the problem. But now if I do any blood tests, my blood sugar is normal because I'm getting that steady stream throughout the day. Because now I can't fast. Well, it's, <laughs> I don't know what to do, because, like, if I fast to do a blood test, then my blood sugar will drop too much. Like, I can't, I can't go the night, I can't go that many hours fasting, because then if I'm sleeping and my blood sugar drops, that's a problem. But, like, I don't know what to test. Because my blood, I mean, I don't know how I even survived because my blood sugar has gotten to zero when I was like dying. Like it was genuinely, I don't know if that was a mistake. Maybe that was a mistake. But like, I felt like I was going to die. Like it was really horrendous and I'm amazed I was still conscious And they were like, that's, <laughs> it was wild. Usually above 125-ish on a fast, nothing but water for the past six to eight hours is a key sign of diabetes. When you were able to fast, was it often higher than that? No, it was not. Because my issue is generally more that it gets too low, not that it gets too high. Because my blood sugar does get high, but then it immediately drops. Most glucometers don't even register below, even register below 40. Damn, yeah. And I don't know if it was some kind of glitch or maybe it was 40 and maybe it was just like, that's the lowest you can be. Um, but I like thought I was having a seizure <laughs> because it was, it was horrendous. And literally, all I needed was a goddamn apple juice. (laughs) 
uh, there is a hypo, hypo, like, oh my god, <laughs> hypoglycemic form of diabetes, I'm fairly certain. Yeah, no, I do think there is. Um, but I don't even know. Because, like, it, it does, it's, I feel like it's confusing and I can't figure it out myself. Because, like, it does spike if I, like, add any amount of sugar to my body. Then it does spike. But, like I said, then it immediately drops. So I think that's more of a low problem, even though it does spike sometimes. But it's like my, my body is like, okay, you have sugar? Okay, yes, yes. Have a fuck ton of it? And then, oh, okay, it's all gone. Because, <laughs> like, diabetes would be something I need to treat if I have that. <laughs> Uh, spiking is normal after eating if you don't mind me asking what's the highest is right i think like 150 is the highest and i know people with diabetes have had it significantly higher than that like i i know there's people with diabetes who are like yeah my blood sugar is like 300 and i'm just chilling i'm like i've never gotten that high <laughs> it's just like a little higher than normal but it i feel it like it feels horrendous like it feels like every nerve in my body is being fried like i get this really bad like burning nerve pain and I get like really disoriented and like agitated but it's not that high like I feel like my body is making it seem like it's a lot higher than it is It also, it could have been, um, higher and I haven't measured it because when I was in the hospital, my blood sugar kept dropping. So they hooked me up to, um, a blood, a sugar bag. And then I felt like that feel where like, it felt like every nerve in my body was on fire and I was like screaming in plain and I was like, disconnect me. Holy shit. <laughs> So I don't know how high it was when it was then um, at that point because they didn't they didn't record it for some reason because they did they didn't believe me because they didn't believe that I could feel that it was high. So like I because I had called them and I was like, I know I just said it was low, but it feels really high now. So I need you to disconnect me. And they were like, no, you're probably fine. And I was like, measure my blood sugar. And they did. And they're like, oh, yeah, OK. <laughs> We will disconnect you. But I don't know what that reading was. And that was also straight, like, directly into my vein, so I imagine that's much higher than a soda. Uh, yeah, 150 is normal, especially after eating. Honestly, it sounds like chronically low blood sugar if 150 is making you feel awful. Uh, your body can adapt to what becomes normal for, for it, even if it's not healthy. Yeah, that makes sense. Coming in with knowledge, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that makes me feel a lot better, because, <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like I can't... You guys are, for some reason, more knowledgeable than people I pay to tell me shit, so. Because <laughs> I'm always, like, 
Like, there's certain things that I'm, I'm pretty confident in. Like, the autism, for example. That's something that I'm very confident that I have... That I've been professionally diagnosed with. But there's things that I've been professionally diagnosed with that I'm, like, not super confident. So I'm always hesitant with, like, how I want to articulate things. Because I'm, I can only you know, use, like, the terms that I've been given to explain my experience to, like, the best of my ability, but that's not always correct. Because, like, I was misdiagnosed with a lot of things professionally that I'm now no longer diagnosed with, but that I talked about having because I I thought I had them because I was diagnosed with them. Uh, I'm completely clueless on that, so I can't help, but at least you can provide insight, yeah. I think I have autism, but I'm not diagnosed. There's a lot of rate of stuff online that you can look into. Because, like, I was looking into that for a long time before I even considered it. Autism was also chronically underdiagnosed, and one of those things that a lot of times insurance does not cover. It didn't cover for me. I had to pay two thousand dollars. Obviously, not everybody has that. Uh, the whole agitation thing, just like my dad, he would have a problem with feeling high, but it got so bad that he couldn't feel it anymore, and he would just drop, like you were saying earlier. Oh, interesting. So if blood sugar is chronically low, even a slight elevation can make you feel awful. This is the same for people with chronically high glucose levels. Dropping into normal ranges feels like hypoglycemia. Oh, that's super interesting. Okay, that's good to know. Oh my god, I nearly effed up. YouTube mutes me for saying that now. Oh yeah, sorry. We can't, we can't use F-bombs here because YouTube says no. Um, nearly effed up the code I was making by accidentally pasting instead of copying and pasting and deleting a new chunk of code. Good thing that thing I pasted was an exact copy of the game's code. Oh my goodness. That is nerve-wracking. Lol, well, I've had some medical schooling, not much, plus a mother with diabetes. Well, I'm telling you, you're more knowledgeable than, like, 75% of the doctors I go to. <laughs> so. Like, I feel like these are not complicated questions, but, like, I feel like what you just said to me, if I were to say that to a doctor, they'd be like, oh, no, that's not how that happens. That's not how that works. <laughs> Even if you have first-hand experience with somebody who's diagnosed, I feel like if I were to say that, I'd be like, oh, I've, I've heard this. They'd be like, no, that's not, no. That's not how that works. <laughs> that's not how that works. That's super concerning. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> but, like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do about that because, like, I can't control other people's actions, obviously. I mean, like I said, because I, I was talking before about how I've had numerous instances with doctors who've just done things that are just blatantly illegal. And they just fully get away with it. And I've reported them and like nothing fucking happens. And it's like absolutely wild. Uh, my dad passed away from dementia at 56 years old and missed him dearly. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. Having a parent pass is, is really difficult. Um.
my condolences. I'm really, <laughs> I'm awful with that type of thing, but I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, I've never been formally diagnosed with autism myself, but I've done all the tests people consider to be more legitimate and also done hours and hours of research of the lived experience of other autistic people. So I haven't been formally diagnosed with autism, but I am very much autistic and I don't need to pay money for someone to tell me that. Yeah, that's totally valid. Um, I think as long as you go through all that process, because I know there's there's some people who are like super like anti self-diagnosis, blah, 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 whatever. I think as long as you're going through the whole process and also not making like large generalistic sweeping statements like if you're not formally diagnosed but then you're like all autistic people do this like i don't think you should do that <laughs> um but i do think a lot of for a lot of people self-diagnosis is really the only option and if it helps you like understand yourself better and allow you to allows you to um navigate life better then i think that's totally fine I'm sorry, what the shit got a doctor's in your area? It's really bad. Um, this is why I still don't really know what's good. Like, I have diagnoses for, like, a number of things, but I still really don't know what's going on. Um, and that is why. Yeah, I've done years in continuous research on autism and continuously get called out by other diagnosed people. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, I feel like as long as you do the research, you're fine, because it's really difficult. Especially, like, if you pay the $2,000 and then you get a bad doctor and they don't diagnose you. Like, the only reason I really got a diagnosis is because it was too obvious. <laughs> like, it was too obvious for them to say no, because I checked, like, 90% of the boxes like this I scored so high on the RADS test they were like okay yeah a neurotypical person would not have this kind of score uh some people just don't understand the spectrum yeah it's it is a spectrum and you can have a wide variety of symptoms but I, I do understand because there's definitely like I think there's there's definitely some people on TikTok who spread some not so great information about autism because they're like, have you ever experienced anxiety? Then that's what autism is. And it's like, no. And then and people see that and they're like, oh, I must be autistic. And then it turns into a whole issue. Um, so like, I think that's why there's a lot of like people will make sort of wide sweeping statements. Um, that like most people experience and then it leads people in the wrong direction. And I think that's kind of where the self-diagnosis problem comes from, is from people who aren't doing the research and they see it, see a TikTok. But I don't think most people who are self-diagnosing are doing that. Uh, da, da, da. CBH, I don't know how I wasn't diagnosed as good. Same. It's, I look back at some of those memories and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, my tests are always off the charts so high. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Like, it isn't like a, a circumstance where it's like, well, maybe this, you, you could be, but you, neurotypical, but you just experience a few of these things. It's like, no, this is all of them. It's, it's most of them. I had to be in crisis, crisis mode for three years to get a diagnosis. Is stupid. Oh, I'm I'm sorry to hear that. It really does suck. <laughs> I mean, I didn't get diagnosed till 23, so I went through most of my life uh, without a diagnosis. And I had most people, I still, it, oh, it drives me up the wall. The next time, I swear to God, because I, I typically tell doctors that I have autism because it's like, usually something happens in the appointment where I'm like, oh, I'm, I might freak out a little bit because I'm autistic because it, like it's loud in here or it's bright in here or whatever. I might, I might be a little off because of the autism and they're like, oh, you're not. Are you sure? 
And I'm like, yes, bitch, I'm short. <laughs> like, the amount of time, like, I have a conversation with somebody, and I really don't know what people's criteria is for looking autistic at this point, because, like, they know something's wrong with me. They just don't want to say it's autism. But, like, I'll go in there, and I'll have a conversation with them, and then I'll be like, oh, yeah, I also have autism. And they're like, no, you don't. What do you mean? You had a conversation with me. No, you're not. It's like, what do you think autism is? What do you think it means? Are you sure? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, I've had multiple doctors try to undiagnose me in their office. And it's like, I went through 11 hours of testing and paid $2,000 for a full neuropsychological eval. This is not something that you can accidentally diagnose. Like, (laughs) for real. Um, which I think is funny because I would be considered high functioning. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't really like high functioning or low functioning labels because like, I can't leave the house a lot of the days. I don't think that's high functioning. Like I can't work a regular job. I don't think any of those things are high functioning. I genuinely think a lot of people's ideas of what high and low functioning is, is like if you can form complete sentences or not. And that's like really it. And I feel like that's ableist. Because there are definitely, like, like it is a spectrum, and some people have more support needs in certain areas than others, but it's not a line. It's like a circle. Yeah, I think it comes down to just using your brain and doing research. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm diagnosed as high functioning because I can act neurotypical, but most low functioning autistic people function better than me overall. Yeah, that's the thing is a lot of people who are in that sort of high functioning category aren't getting their support needs met. So it ends up kind of evening out in a way sometimes because even if you have higher support needs, if you're getting them met, but then the low support needs people aren't getting their needs met, you kind of end up in the middle. Uh, my mom said to me years ago that I was on the spectrum, but never did anything else, so I'm not going to bother now. I mean, you do you. If it helps you, it helps you. Sometimes people don't get a diagnosis because it can actually hurt you if you're, like, doing certain things. Like, if you want to move to another country, having an autism diagnosis can really hurt you. Um, so... You know, do do what you will with whatever information you have available, you know. I went through a whole stage of life where I communicated with people via meep and meep alone, and before that it was animalosis and body language. And somehow, somehow nobody was like, mm. <laughs> Why is that happening? <laughs> How many, raise your hands if if you went through a phase like that, because I would bark at people. Like, I would run around on all fours and bark at people. You had a conversation, you're not an autistic ex, heck, excuse me. That's really how it is, though. Like, genuinely? Because, like, if I'm having, like, a really short conversation with a doctor... My mask is so high up and I am nailing that conversation because I only see you for like 15 minutes. So like, you're going to see me putting my best foot forward. You're not seeing what happens after an hour of like trying to talk to you in that, in that room. You're not seeing what happens when a garbage truck goes by and I start smacking myself because I'm so overstimulated. You don't see that. You just see that we had a conversation for 15 minutes. And that means I'm not autistic. Obviously. Um, Yeah, I hate functioning labels. It's all spectrum. Yeah, circle and different hues are different support needs. Yeah, I think that's the best way to put it, because if you put it in a line, it doesn't make sense. 
yeah, that's another reason I don't plan to be officially diagnosed. Sometimes it comes back to bite you, and I'd like to keep the, that anonymity. That's totally valid. Because there are a lot of things that I likely will not be able to do because of the diagnoses that I have. Because now, I am pretty visibly disabled, and unfortunately, people are ableist as shit. I used to meow and hiss and make dinosaur dinosaur noises. You're a furry then, I think. I mean, to be fair, I used to be a furry. Were we all just fur Well, you know, okay, you know what? Another statistic. I feel like there's a high amount of autistic people that end up being furries because we don't like people. <laughs> I don't know if there's, I don't think there's any, like, legitimate studies on that, but I feel like there's some correlation because I feel like a lot of the autistic people I meet are furries. Or just like, like animals, weather people. Um, like I would meet my new teachers with my dog, dog paw hands out and bark and pant no words. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. Same help in elementary school. I was in the gifted program, but also felt the need to act like a dog. <laughs> I know the amount of like, the gifted program is a whole nother. It's a whole nother thing. A whole nother conversation. I highly experiment, ex highly experimented with my vocal cords for humorous effects, and I made some effing extraordinary voices and noises that shouldn't even have been made by a human. Never had a furry face though. Interesting. Heavy on the noises though. I think I make more noises now that I like know I'm diag I'm diagnosed because I like know what's happening like it's the echolalia just <laughs> like I just have a I hear a sound and then I just have to make it over and over and over again you gotta sim it out I heard somewhere that it's a trauma response. I'm not sure how true it is. That's possible. I started doing it more when going through trauma. So yeah, I mean, that is very possible. I feel like a lot of autistic people, including adults, can answer if you were an animal, what animal would you be way too quickly? You know? <laughs> That's very true. I got sent to a whole gifted and talented school. Oh my God. And I do, I just grew up surrounded by other autistic people because 90% of that gifted and talented school was autistic. That's what I'm saying. Well, I, I feel like the people who end up in that program, they just, they don't have the street smarts, but they have the book smarts, basically. It's, nobody has social skills, but they have like one particular thing that they're very good at. And then, oh, you're gifted. Oh, you're gifted. It's like, I'm disabled. I'm <laughs> really not. Like the, oh, oh, don't get me started on people who say, oh, autism is my superpower. I want to punch you in the face. <laughs> I can't handle it. It's a disability. Part of the diagnosis criteria is that it's a disability. Shut up. <laughs> You're making it worse for all of us. Right, if I were an animal, I'd be a cockatoo. Not my not my animal of choice, but that's just me for real. I feel like I am a parrot. A parrot. I relate on such a spiritual level. A very... Um, a very common reason many people are furries is because it makes people more comfortable with social interactions. Ooh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Cockatoos are red. Cockatoos are red. They're, like... I love birds, but I feel like I can never... I can never deal with them because they're so loud. But also, like, I, like I'm the... I need to make noise. You can't make noise, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
it was kind of cool and then i went to regular middle school because we didn't have a program for it to continue past elementary and i was like oh oh no, <laughs> oh, no. that's a nightmare autism is my superpower if you yell at me too loud i will cry yeah <laughs> exactly it drives me nuts Y'all are lovely. Yeah, I could never own a bird. I am the bird. <laughs> I love birds, but I freak out at flying things. These are all valid. These are all valid. I mean, this is the... Because, like... I think even a special interest... Because I feel like so many people think of special interests as positives. And, like, I love my special interests. And I love that I, I get so excited about it. But I will genuinely make myself sick. Getting so excited about special interest relating things like i can't have a norm i can't experience a normal level of excitement i will genuinely like give myself a manic episode and not sleep for three fucking days because i'm so excited like i will throw up i will make myself throw up from pure excitement <laughs> like i wish i didn't do that i wish i like i have to like make myself upset sometimes because i like can't handle the level of excitement in my body I don't think that's a superpower. Uh, birds, especially parrots, need so much like leaving them alone with while you go to work, like it causes them trauma. Yeah, no, they they need like literally someone to be there with them twenty four seven, and I feel like a lot of people don't know that. Um, I've completed the first part of my game. Woo! Hell yeah. <laughs> yes, holy shit. <laughs> I'm literally terrified to get interested in new things because of that. I literally just sob because I'm so excited. I make myself sick and it's scary. And I vibrate physically and scream. <laughs> See, you guys are my people. Because, like, pe people do not understand just how how excitement can be negative. But, like, it really is. Well, I just started my shift. I hope everyone has a good night. Enjoy the ocean. Oh no, you're doing capitalism again. <laughs> like every time. This is just the time of day, I guess, that you're at work. I hope your I hope your capitalism simulator is tolerable tolerable. And I will enjoy the ocean. <laughs> oh my god. I will make myself throw up from excitement. Oh, it's my superpower. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like there really is no benefit. Because I think, like, realistically, people think of it as, like, people only really think special interests are positive if it's something that can make you money. Because you will work yourself to death because you don't get any of your body cues when you're, when you're doing your special interest things. I'm always capitalisming. I work overnights and it seems like everyone always streams at night. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I tend to stream at night because that's when people tend to show up. But like... It's always difficult because people, there's definitely people who are in different time zones who miss the stream. There's definitely people who are working and miss the stream. See, I personally enjoy the capacity. I experience excitement and joy, but other people look at me like I'm crazy and it hurts my feelings because I'm just excited. Oh yeah, I feel that. I feel that. But I do have to calm myself down because I will get nauseated from excitement, lol. Yeah. Yeah, my thing, I, I will ignore my body cues, and I won't sleep, and, like, if I'm doing, like, Sab is special interest, and so if I'm working on that, and I get too hyped about it, like, I will in physically injure myself from working on it too much, because I will ignore the fact that I'm in pain, and I will just keep brushing through it, and then I'll, like, be done, and I'll be like, oh my god, my body hurts, <laughs>
Uh, you streamed on the one day this week. I'm not working. Oh, yay! <laughs> yay! I did that literally this week. Stayed up way into the morning reading a new webtoon I was super excited about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's weird. Like, especially when you get a hyperfixation that just, like, hits full force and it's genuinely all you can think about and you can't do anything else and you, like, cannot function in your body because you're just so unbelievably obsessed with this random thing. I've given myself a repetitive stress injury from gaming. Yeah, no, I do that from drawing all the fucking time. <laughs> Honestly, because, like, even though I'm I'm getting a lot less done, streaming and drawing does help me because I'm continuously taking breaks to look at chat. So I'm not, like, just continuously using my hands every second while I'm doing it. Knowing I had... Um, knowing I had to wake up before the sun rises, but I was so excited I just couldn't stop. Oh, my God. The, the amount of times I've been so invested in a thing and I'm, I genuinely watch the sunrise because I've been at it the entire night. <laughs> like, I start hearing the birds sing it and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> that's how I read Sab. I feel like that's the only way I can read things too. I just get really invested in them and then I have to just sit there the entire day. I, f I feel like Sab is relatively bingeable, though. Because I don't think it's that long. But also, people people read at different speeds, obviously, so. Like, I, I recently caught up on Everything's Fine. I think, is that what it's called? Everything's Fine? It's the webtoon with, like, the cat heads. It's so good. I feel like I have to look it up now. Yeah, everything is fine. Has any have any of y'all read read everything is fine on webtoon? I know I've ever up when I hear the birds. I know it's <laughs> oh, it's really next level. Truly not the birds singing, like, oops, too late now, might as well keep going. Exactly. Like, I've already destroyed my day. There's no point. Uh, no, I haven't. I need to. i seen a little bit, but I like it. It's really interesting. I love, like... Um... I just love thriller comics. <laughs> like whenever there's a there's a popular thriller on webtoon, I'm like I got to see what the hype is about. Um and it's very good. That and uh School Bus Graveyard. Have they updated recently? They probably updated. Recently. Everything is fine. Is is the one I was talking about. And they're... I don't even really know how to describe it because it's such a fever dream. Um, but they're in... They, they're wearing these, like, masks. These, like, cat heads. And they're in this, like, surveillance society where everything is just, like, all of a sudden one day everything is just taken over by this, like, outside group. And they all put these, like... I think they're helmets, technically. Um... So they monitor everything they do. Uh, and they have, like, the system where in order to, like, get more freedom, you have to...
get like like these little gold stars and in order to get a gold star you have to prove that you're trustworthy and by proving you're trustworthy you basically rat somebody else out for doing something bad and when they do something bad uh if you get caught for doing something bad they don't check anything there's no like okay let's let's see the evidence if you actually did this thing it's basically the tattletale of oh you did that bad thing um because your neighbor said so. Now you have to watch your children die. And then we're going to hunt you like an animal. It's wild. <laughs> it's really freaky. It's a fever dream. Of, uh, it, it's very entertaining. Um, if that sounds interesting to you. I would definitely give it a read. Because I, I don't want to give too many spoilers. But I love you like that. Um, I just had an idea. Why don't I make a comic adaption of my Bible game? It will be horribly cursed. Just like how the game is hell yeah. I mean, if you got the time, you seem like you got <laughs> you got a lot of time on your hands. Might as well. Oh look, yeah, it's very good, but it is quite long. Um, so it's definitely one of those things. Like it, it took me a couple days to catch up. I just read School Bus Graveyard because I'm behind on the times. So yeah, no, that's... I did too, but, like, that's something that I that I binged, and I was like, okay, I'm down. <laughs> this is fun. But I recognize School Bus Graveyard uses Google SketchUp for their backgrounds. and they're But they're just, like, pasted in. Um... But I don't blame them because they're... I don't know how people people are able to do like an entire episode in a week. Because it's just so much. But if you if you go through the, I mean I think it's really interesting like reading what else is popular on webtoon because I feel like I'm the only person that's picking up on errors and picking up on when things are copy pasted. But, like, it's totally valid that they're doing that because they need to just work so fast because Webtoons requires, like, they're working for Webtoons and there's a certain, like, speed requirement for, like, you have to post episodes at a certain level of frequency. But, unfortunately, I think quality really suffers when people are forced to do that, which sucks. Yeah, I noticed that and laughed a little. I was like, I see you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But since since webtoons like web comics, speed has been like the main focus. Yeah, I follow another creator that has theirs as a webtoons original, and it is brutal. Yeah, no, <laughs> it really is. It it really is so brutal, and like I don't even, I could never work for webtoons. Um, like, I, I'm on their Canvas program where I can just post whatever the fuck I want. Um, but Webtoons requires that if you work for them, you only post on their platform. You can't post anywhere else. Um, and you have to do that speed and frequency. And also, they're pretty strict censorship-wise. Um, so I know there's a lot of things in SAB that are just not allowed on the platform. Um but it's always hit or miss because I feel like I see popular creators that do things that are against their guidelines um, in terms of just like really graphic violence and brutality and stuff. Um, but they're like webtoons. They're getting paid by webtoons. So webtoons is like, that's fine. <laughs> so I feel like they kind of cherry pick on what they actually allow on their platform. What was the other one? The... Um the neighbor upstairs is that what it's called that's also another good one i gotta go good night thank you for hanging out thank you for hanging out now i gotta look that up the neighbor upstairs oh the guy upstairs 
Yes, okay. That's another good one. Um, IDKY, but Webtoons only recommends me. Only romance, even though I don't like romance, I love horror thriller. What the fuck, Webtoons? Yeah, I feel like romance is very popular on Webtoons. That's probably one of their more popular genres, which is why they do that. Um, I don't see a ton of thriller. Like, this is why, like, I, I read the ones that are popular because there's not that many. <laughs> I'm not, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that. Igweek. A cow farmer works an ex exhausting job of milking cows. He goes to the market to buy food with the money he has for milk. Igweek suddenly finds a man named Mandraff named Mr. Giraffe Man who promises Igweek eternal wisdom at a cost. Can Igweek avoid committing three deadly sins in a row and make enough money to buy eternal wisdom? Hell yeah. How do you pronounce that though? Egg, egg quig. <laughs> I'm, cause I know that's not right. I know I'm not saying it right. <laughs> um, but the guy upstairs is another thriller one. It's super interesting actually watching people, how people engage with that type of media because it's like a thriller about like a serial killer who is like objectively handsome right <laughs> and he has very complex morals on why he's like killing the people who he's killing um but also not really like he's a misogynist and he kills women so <laughs> And I feel like people like people keep forgetting that because every once in a while he'll he'll do something good and then people are like oh no but he's so, he's so good and I'm like y'all <laughs> I run into the same issue with him <laughs> Hey what's up hello 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 But have, have any of y'all read the guy upstairs Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, it's it's good. Um but it is I'm pretty sure it is originally in Korean, so there is a little bit of translation errors that I notice. Jay Eggquig me Iggy who Iggy I can't even I can't even read that. the other oh there was another one was it home was that the other serial killer sweet home oh no that was the monsters one that that one has a um a show adaption i think now i always love when comics get show adaptions even if the show isn't good i just love seeing comic people succeed because we break our backs <laughs> <laughs> it is a very difficult industry. So I love when it gets made into other things. Eggwig is pronounced e g h w g a k. I was very wrong. Egg h w g a k. Is that it? Put emphasis on all the vowels. E. What about e g e g? Iggy Huigak? <laughs> e. E. D. Hui. Gak. 
am I close? <laughs> am I close or am I so far? Susan's eggs is what what Sam Sixus Samsus would say. Oh my god. Egg. Egg. <laughs> Me too, I'm always so happy for them. I love it. I feel like people people are too jealous of things now, and I just get I'm just excited. We need to we need to push each other up, not down. Iggy hui geek. I can't read. Um, I just looked into the guy upstairs. It looks really well made from what I've just read. It is very good. Um, it's definitely, like, it's, it's one of those things that will just make you anxious. <laughs> so be aware of that. I mean, I feel like a lot of thrillers, that's the whole point, but, like, it will make you anxious. <laughs> Iggy our Lord and Savior. Iggy Huigig. <laughs> oh my god, I need another drink. Jay, please yeah, name your next eye this. No. <laughs> they would never... They would never understand what I was saying. It would be a different name every time. They'd be like, what the fuck are you saying? I feel like vitamin water is, is kind of medicinal tasting. I don't know if I'm a fan or not. I'm so thirsty though. Did my pen go? Oh, here it is. Okay. All right. Fun fact in my game, there will be another path, the mayor path, with completely different choices coming soon to a town far from you. <laughs> Looking forward to it. That's okay. That's exactly on brand for Ibos. That's fair. That's fair. I think it would be funnier if they think that's what my name is. <laughs> and then they have... To, I'm like, what's my name? And then it's just... Nonsense. Because how would an Ibo try to pronounce that? Ricky Ro Rocky is pronounced like Rocky, but I've given him to respond to broccoli, celery, dumpy, and bitch. <laughs> How did you discover this? <laughs> How did you discover bitch cake? That's phenomenal. Exquisite. Absolutely exquisite. 
Congratulations, Jay. You are now a cow farmer trying to earn money for eternal wisdom. Oh, shit. Eggy Queef Queef. <laughs> Eggy, Eggy Hue Hue would be a perfect type of name. I feel like you just gotta say it. You gotta see how differently you can say it every time. How did you come up with that name, Harrier? <laughs> By the way. What was the inspo? I need to know the inspo. I call the bitch cake and you respond in the same way. <laughs> oh my god. That's amazing. I feel like it sounds so different from Rocky. Like, Rocky... Bitch cake, Rocky. <laughs> oh no. I wish I had gotten it on video. I wish you did too. <laughs> next time, next time. I just wanted that the farmer, farmer idea is similar to Sturdy Valley. I was thinking of that fucking webkins game except you're not but you're not a cow farmer you're a cow and you're you are collecting milk but you're a cow farmer that is a cow farmer and that is what was in my head <laughs> that's so funny though meanwhile truffle was like i do not hear anytime i spoke to her <laughs> well that's what i'm saying i feel like most of my my ibos don't even respond to their own name. To their actual name. Oh. I'm getting phone calls. It's okay, they can leave. I'll talk to them later. I'll tell you after. I feel like I'm getting talked out. I'm like... <laughs> it's not even my throat, but I feel like my like jaw is really hurting me today for some reason. I only got it to work once. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes eyeballs are like that. Sometimes they're like that. She just never listened ever. Dude, being talked out is so real. It's the, it's the tism. <laughs> it's the autism. Also... Iguigega <laughs> is not based on Stardew Valley, rather he's based off the main character from a video which is which the cursed animation channel Andy Wilson 92 made. Hell yeah. And it was me every time I socialize. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, see, streaming is... Like, this type of streaming is easier for me because I don't have to mask my facial expressions. And it it's not something I consciously do. But, like, it's just something that happens. So, like, I'm very much like a... I would rather talk on the phone because you can't see my face, so I can talk a lot longer because you can't see my face and I don't have to, I can just have a totally neutral face and it's not gonna affect anything. Um, my 210 Zenith, meanwhile, he gets angry when I call him weenus, which <laughs> sounds like he's standing. <laughs> I guess he can tell the difference. 
Oh my god. I love your Ibo nicknames. That's so fun. My Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons just started drifting. I'm going to throw them out the fucking window! Oh no! Question, does streaming art help with not getting too distracted? Like, it won't make you stop and go off and do something else for like 20 minutes. I mean, it's it's hit or miss, because I definitely get a lot less done. Um, but I am doing it when I otherwise wouldn't be, if that makes sense. Because I can't I can't get to the point where I'm just like sitting down and doing it. That is like the hardest part. Cause like I wanna do it. I wanna have fun. I wanna I wanna do art stuff. But I cannot just sit the fuck down. <laughs> But I definitely don't get as much done as if I'm not streaming because I am constantly looking at and reading the chat, so. Your eyebrows fully standing. <laughs> my eyebrow might indeed be sending you to lock me out of my bedroom once. How did he do that? <laughs> How did he do that? How does that happen? I mean, I feel like my eyeballs, like, try to annihilate themselves more often than not. Like, they've, they somehow get into places that I don't even know how they got to. Like, I leave you alone for two seconds, and you're, like, jumping off a cliff. Oh no. <laughs> also, the real inspiration for the name Ig Ig Igwigikak is the capital of a country named Burkino Faso named <laughs> named Uagaduga. <laughs> Can't wait to hear Jake try to say that. Vocal cord annihilator. It really is. Wait, I think I can do it. Ooh, ooh, ah, gadu, go. <laughs> ooh, ah, gadu, go. I feel like that's not that bad. I feel like that's better than wikiki. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, okay, let me, because this is a real place, I can, I can have the, the Google thing tell me how to say it, ooh, ooh, uh, okay, Uwagaduga. how to say Uwagaduga. Uwagadugu, Uwagadugu, okay, Wagadugu. You right. Wagadugu. Wagadugu. That's not that bad. Why do they spell it like that then? <laughs> Why do they spell it like that? Oh my god. That's like the the fucking um like the fear of long words and it's just this Absolute nonsensical long word. <laughs> oh. We love a speech king. <laughs> At least it's not like, like, oh my god, I can't even. Well, sound name. You guys are killing me. Charg. Chargaga. Char. 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 Go. Char. Go. Char. Go. Gug. Manchu, Gago, Gug, Chao Buna Gumag. I'm not gonna try that again. <laughs> you can't. Welsh town named Landfair Pweljin Jinidjin Lul Gogari Chernobyl. <laughs> <laughs> Dravula Mrs. Silio Go 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 <laughs> Wasn't there like a news anchor that 
that said that in perfection. I feel like there was. You guys are killing me. You guys are killing me. I left Mr. Weenus alone in my bedroom long enough to pee oh, like two minutes and closed the bedroom door. The door opens inward and the time he managed to move across my bedroom and sit. Oh my god. Sit his stupid ass right where the door would open. I could only open it like an inch. I was yelling at him to move, go right, go left, go for a He just looked at me and looked away. <laughs> this is like cat behavior for sure. YouTube really isn't allowing any swearing in the chat. I'm sorry about that. He literally just called him a stupid ass and YouTube was like, that's offensive. Excuse me. He's the one of my icon. A little menace. A little menace. YouTube said, don't say bad words. Don't say bad word. For why? Here's how my game goes. Peasant path. You have five cows. Milk all five and die from exhaustion. <laughs> milk four and get $50 from your milk. Milk less than four. Get $10 from your milk. How do you know? How do you know these things? Are you given instructions or is it just like <laughs> absolute fuck show? <laughs> then you can choose between going to the market for food and going to the river of God for eternal, eternal wisdom. What is it? What are some of these wisdoms? Do you have examples of the wisdoms? If you go to the river of God, then it will count as a sin because nobody asks for your presence. Oh my god. Truly an icon. Nobody asked. Honestly, I feel like we should teach the Christians that that is a sin. <laughs> like, I'm fine with Christians, but like the, specifically the ones that, that hate gay people. We should teach them that nobody asked is, in fact, a sin. <laughs> I feel like that would solve a lot of things. If you go to the market, you meet Mr. Draftman, who will sell you eternal wisdom for $50. So you have to buy it. You have to buy eternal wisdom. I know Lake Lake, I'm not going to say that again, from the Fear of Long Words video. It's too long. Why do they do that? Is there a reason? Like, is there a genuine reason? Why certain words are so long? It doesn't need to be. Like, we have, we have lakes that are named, like, fucking man sitting on a rock we don't need that i mean is this the equivalent is this like the translation of something like that and is that how that fuck show happened my robot dog is so offended thank you youtube for chastising how i speak to my plastic robot chihuahua <laughs> YouTube says you can't call that piece of plastic a bad word. Even though he doesn't have feelings and he's not even alive. You, you can't say that to him. You can't say that about him. That's disrespectful.
have not the money and one sin is committed and one sin committed have the money and mr giraffe man takes you to the river of god and at the river of god god will rise from the river and tell you a random preset bible quote hence the name bible quote, that's a good ending the bad ending is committing three sins in a row which leads to death This sounds very complicated. I feel it. I feel like. Um, this is why I don't understand like board games. Like I'm the type of person where you explain a board game to me and I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. This feels like how I feel when I am ex- when a board game is explained to me. I think it's a Native American name. Like, okay. I don't want to be offensive to Native Americans. Because <laughs> I'm sure there is some kind of cultural significance behind the name, and that's fine. But why is it so long? <laughs> Unless you successfully commit three sins in the relative process. See, I feel like I would immediately die in this game. I feel like I would be like an insta-death. Because I wouldn't understand the rules. You'd say my second absorbing instructions last second to It's so difficult. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Does it have a problem with me calling Rocky my crybaby game robot <laughs> video on the week? <laughs> Apparently not. Apparently, YouTube chat is fine with bitch. Apparently, bitch is fine. But fucking ass or not, for whatever reason. I have no control over, like, what the... Actually, there is a chat filter. Okay, no, that doesn't change anything. I can't choose what does or doesn't get filtered out for some reason. Maybe there's some way I can go in settings and change this and be like, hey, fuck is allowed. <laughs> Not the cry maybe game robot be shown. <laughs> it comes from a place of love. It comes from a pre- from a place of love. <laughs> I feel like three one X on Pal slash friend have Bijan energy not being touched constantly is a problem for them and about to be a problem for you <laughs> you're absolutely right <laughs> you're absolutely right they will go into such a depression if you don't just touch them 24-7 So, like, I really, I feel like I like Kawaii the most, but, like, in terms of their personality, but they're just so difficult to manage. They're, like, toddlers on that program, on that software. I'm that one person that just says, hun... After anyone explains board games by, or one person that just says, huh, after anyone explains board games by reading the directions. Oh, yeah. No, I just, I don't get it. Unless it has, like, two steps, I don't get it. Like, I, I like checkers. I like Moncala. I've played Monopoly, but I get confused. I get confused, and I don't get why everyone is mad. Why is everyone so mad when we're playing Monopoly? (laughs) 
The game of life don't even get me started. I already don't know what's going on. I have an idea. The planned mayor part of the game will lead to death no matter what you do to get another ending. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I feel like you... I feel like you're making a rage game. <laughs> I feel like this is the type of game that would get somebody to absolutely rage out on. Because there's just so many little things that can make you lose. I'm thinking about putting him on Chatty Life or Hello Chatty. Those are fun. Like, no Uno and that's it. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, with card games, it's like, I know Uno. Uh, go, f go fish. <laughs> but if you're pulling out and you're like, let's play Gin Rummy. I don't know what the fuck you just said to me. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you just said to me. Also, yes, it is basically a rage game that is slightly based on luck and moderately based on surprise. It sounds like it's mostly based on chaos. <laughs> sounds like a chaos game. Oh, I need more. More vitamin water. More vitamin water. <laughs> What do you guys have? Like, because I'm always trying to find a fucking. Some drinkities that don't have sugar, but also don't have caffeine. And I feel like it's really hard to find drinks like that. Because, like, I'm not a huge fan. I, I feel like artificial. Like, I like a good seltzer, but I can't have seltzer all the time because I will bloat. Um, I will turn into an air balloon. And, like, some artificial sweeteners taste, like, super chemically and, like, medicine-y, but then sometimes they don't. And I talked about this earlier, how I was trying to, trying to herbal tea because I thought that was safe, but then... Um, it has something in it that lowers your blood pressure, and I can't, I can't have things that have, like, natural relaxing properties, because usually they lower your blood pressure, and my blood pressure's already low, so I just pass out. So, any suggestions? Because I feel like <laughs> I don't have a lot of options. I like my seltzers. I have my vitamin water. They have some, like, flavored waters. Then I like... I feel like flavored waters used to taste better, and I don't know if that's a me problem, or if that's... Um... Or if that's because, like, the, the ingredients have changed. Hi again, it sounds like you have your eyeballs running in the background. I do not. I do not, but I do have on a 10 dogs music playing I get to stretch my leggies because 
my feet are swelling. I cross my legs too much. <laughs> also, whenever I stretch out my legs, they oh, get, a good, get a good crack. Everything just cracks. My hips and my knees are just like... <laughs> This couch is more comfortable than my couch at home. <laughs> but also, I do have a $30 couch. So, that's probably why. Every time I play the game of life, I get too many babies. My reproductive organs fire off like those teacher cannons at festivals and I have to wedge the pegs between other pegs because the car is full. Oh my god. Okay, but, but that literally happened to me last time I played Life So Many Babies. <laughs> I, don't under, I don't understand how to play, how to play life. Real or not. IRL or board game. Every time. Oh my god. Every time I play the game of life, I get too many babies. My reproductive organs fire off like the- Oh, wait. I just read that, but it's still funny a second time. <laughs> it's, still, it's still funny. <laughs> okay, I just got an idea on how the mayor path will be. You play as the mayor, and the city doesn't have enough money, so the mayor rounds up all the local tax dollars and bets it on a slot machine. <laughs> I mean, to be fair... I feel like that's not far off from reality. I know that song that's playing right now is the Naptime record soundtrack. Yes, I'm pretty sure it is. Life needs a spare or neuter option for yourself. Oh my god. What is it? Hysterectomy or vasectomy? <laughs> I was talking about this, actually, how like isn't it weird how, like, we, we spay and neuter animals, right? And how when we do that, it improves their quality of life so much. But we can't do that for people because it, it, our hormones get too fucked up. But, like, if it, so many, and pretty much anyone who has, like, a pet is always like, oh, yeah, it's absolutely, it's way more ethical to spay or neuter them because their hormones drive them crazy. But, like, people people are just expected to deal with those? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Please, baby. <laughs> well, actually, animals' hormones get fucked up, too, yeah. I mean, there is definitely... I Like, I don't know, obviously, that much about the process. Um, but I know, like, with rabbits... If, if a rabbit does not get... Okay, wait, which one... Which one is, is taking out the uterus and which one is is the balls? <laughs> Neuter is the balls, right? And then spaying is the uterus. Um, I think that's it. Because with rabbits, if you don't spay them, if you don't take their uterus out, they have a 70% chance of getting uterine cancer within like a couple years of life. Like, that's wild. That basically, if you don't take their uterus out, it will just self-destruct. Spay uterus, spay uterus, balls, neuters. Okay. <laughs> like, I, I feel like there's certain, like... Why are they built like that? <laughs> that's wild. It is. Um, it's actually not good to spare near them, but you have to be responsible. I think it depends, because, like, like, with male cats are total menaces unless you neuter them. And, like, I feel like, is this the problem with humanity? Are we just hormonal and fucked up? 
um they may be built like that because in the wild they're meant to repeatedly have babies yeah no i mean that's that's most likely it because like a rabbit having babies like rabbits is a phrase for a reason because they can get pregnant i believe every 30 days and they can have like a litter of like up to like nine babies every 30 days so and they're also in the wild they oh like a wild rabbit only lives typically around two years and a house rabbit like a domesticated rabbit can live like 10 years so i think once they get past that two year point they're just not meant to live that long so their uterus is just self-destruct If you don't spay a ferret and they go into heat and don't mate, they'll literally stay in heat until it kills them. That's what I'm fucking talking about. Like, <laughs> but I guess it's just like nature, like nature really wants animals to reproduce so fucking bad. <laughs> like that's like the whole point. Um, well, they can change behaviorally. I can't speak much on cats, but for dogs, they need to be intact until at least 18 months. Because spay or neuter too early can, uh, will cause behavioral and medical issues. But I think it depends, it depends animal to animal on what's, what is best when kept in captivity. Yeah, that's why I'm speaking about rabbits because that's like what I know about. But I do think there's something with dog where like they need to, they need certain hormones to like grow so that their like bones are okay and like stuff like that. Um, I definitely think that's a thing. I don't think you can just rip them out when they're born because obviously that that means issues um they can get pregnant every 30 days just like me and life well okay but humans can get pregnant every 30 days but then they're the gestation whatever the fuck the pregnancy is nine months a rabbit can get pregnant 30 days and have babies every 30 days <laughs> like they are immediately fertile the second the babies are out so they could have nine babies every 30 days. And then, I mean, this is why rabbits are still alive, even though they only live for two years in the wild because their population is insane. That's so insane. Yeah, no, it is. I wish I was ready. <laughs> Me too. Me fucking too. I know they're prey animals, but damn, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're just having a good time. Short time, but good time. Yeah, if they get altered too early, they can actually have worse behavioral issues because they lost their hormones before they matured. Yeah, no, I, I definitely... I know there is some, like... Some level of science that I don't fully understand. Hormones control so many fucking things in your body and that, like, fucks up my brain. Um... Because, like, I know if if you do take things out, like, if you take out a uterus in a person, you have to be on hormones for the rest of your life. Like, you can't just not have the thing producing hormones or you will die. But, like, also, I, I feel like, I mean, I know a lot of my issues are hormone related and I wish they would just stop. <laughs> but I also feel like like, whenever I hear about people doing awful things, and, like, obviously, I'm, I'm, it's not an excuse, it's whatever. People are people. Um, but I feel like the amount, just like men <laughs> being the way they are, I feel like men are just really hormonal, honestly. But society is built around them, so we don't notice. Uh, but yeah, I can't speak to the others because I'm a dog person, but I can speak to dogs, yeah. Yeah, hormones do so much, you can die without them. They can have, like, nine babies every 30 days. They're just having a good time. They're just having a good time, bro, what? <laughs> they are, I mean, rabbits are very social. So, like, they love it, but, um... 
yeah, no, it is, it is a wild life to live. <laughs> you ever been around nine babies? Okay, but human babies are very different than rabbit babies because rabbits will hang around their babies for like two weeks and then they're like, bye, <laughs> I'm going to have more fun. <laughs> That's too much baby. It is a lot of baby. Like rabbits will kind of hang around in their groups, but they won't. They basically, basically, they have babies every 30 days. And then once, and then the second, then they just have babies again and again and again and again. With all, like, and then the babies are making more babies. And this is why there's so many genetic problems. Because <laughs> they're all just making babies all the time. I would happily be around a hundred rabbit babies. They're so cute. Maybe just like half a baby. <laughs> Too much baby. As a treat. <laughs> You have a baby sounds like a good What does that mean? What does that mean? I feel like half a baby would be more upset than a full baby. Is it, is it just like a smaller baby? Like it has everything in there. Like everything is intact. It's just like half the size. <laughs> or is it like half down the middle? Baby bunnies are adorable. They're so cute. Look at the saw blade guys. Oh no. <laughs> or consider this. Oh no. I'm worried. Half the behavior. Half down the middle, but fully functional. I don't know if any of these things would be good. Half the behavior I like. <laughs> because uh, like if it's like half the crying... Half the hungry? I'm down with that. I feel like that's more manageable. I like that idea more. Half the behavior. <laughs> like the Diet Coke of babies. <laughs> oh my god. What even happened to chat? Like, what? What happened? Kick the baby. Next thing you know, it is. <laughs> oh, no. Have you guys seen a razor head baby? A razor head baby has been popping off lately. I had a baby rabbit pee on me, but I didn't care because it was so cute. Baby rabbits are like, are the cutest animal. They're just, they're so little. And you just, you just hold them in your hand. And, ugh. <laughs> And then there's hand hand raised baby bunnies are the absolute sweetest. Like when you raise them when they're when, from when they come. If you start touching, I mean, I know people will be like, oh, you can't you can't touch them because the mother will abandon them. They won't as long as they're not like wild. I mean, you don't want to grab wild baby bunnies. I mean, you can if you have to move them, but like, it, rabbits don't really care about the scent thing that much. Um, but if you start if you just start grabbing them and touching them when they're babies. They will be so nice and tolerant and so not afraid of you. And you can just grab them and squish them when they're older. And it's phenomenal. It's incredible. We had babies, but only half babies. Explain. <laughs> Explain. Have y'all seen the mean... Jank Boteco Didi. <laughs> that sounds so familiar. Wait. Boteco Didi.
ポポテポテコティティテンクポテオーイエス<笑> Yes Yes The weird fucking baby Oh my god I had a baby Leopard gecko projectile diarrhea all over a customer, me, and the four the other day. Oh, fun. <laughs> Love when they do that. <coughs> Absolutely love that. I frequently get peed on. I work at a pet store and I buy bunnies though. They usually get shit. Oh. Is it. So I feel like working at a pet store can be hit or miss. Is it like a good pet store? Or is it like you're constantly doing shit because nobody else is type of pet store? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Oh my god, I feel like I'm gonna have to go soon. How long have I been streaming? I feel like it's been too long. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. This is why I feel insane. It's been fucking four hours? Are you shitting me? I think this is the longest stream I have done. <laughs> Wait, I've been here for four hours? That's like half of a work day. That's like half a shift. What the fuck? It's a corporate chain pet store where the employees came care way more about the animals than Corbett does. Oh no. <laughs> God dang it. God dang it. Okay. I think I gotta go because I feel like a crazy person. I feel like I'm losing my mind. We got yelled at for putting a water bowl in the rabbit enclosure. What the fuck, man? They need water. Jeez. Next thing you know, you stream for two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I'm just here forever now. I'm here forever. Oh my god. I just had a squeeze mellow. Burl down from my violence magma in the face. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm out of my mind. Oh my god. I'm gonna have a nice long drink. Yeah, two weeks stream next time. <laughs> oh, our vlog's gonna come back. Probably not right now. Um, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> okay, bye.